Well, now, wasn't that big battle in the winter yes. in Ardan? So, uh, I remember reading I'll about that. Want to tell Bill O'Reilly on her killing. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was an awesome. Both of them. Unbelievable. I thought. Uh, because it goes into all that stuff at the same time. Some of the stories of those guys that survived that. Well, my father was one of them. Except he got yes. a very bad life. Christmas Eve of 1944. It took him out of the war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's the existing well, house. That. But just the, just the, the rock now he kind of yeah, it, it, yeah, it did. You can kind of see it if you go up. Okay. Okay. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to read that. All of it. So when they. That one was really good too. Mm -hmm. We can do that. That's okay. So my favorite oh, that the two as long as Nicole says it's okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, so this is the amount of stuff that they can document. Anyway, it says right over This is not a okay. That's good. <laughs> what we can document. Right. And the ba based that, upon historically oh, no. yeah, yeah. 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 evidence and, and that's in those old libraries and stuff. I mean, they actually have pictures to this and the kinds of things those men would do. I'm not going to be able to, well, I can go in there and different things. I mean, they actually have pictures of them. And they, and they describe them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, you know, there are not yeah. I must have <laughs> left my own. <laughs> oh, shoot. I've got to hear what's going on. Direct flight, I have usually two and a half or thirteen. Is it time? Seven oh three. Yeah, I didn't have the direct flight. They read the right hand. At this time, I would like to call to order the City of Colleyville Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for Monday, April tenth, two thousand twenty-three. Um, we'll start by calling roll. Commissioner Groves. Here. Commissioner Alfonso. Here. Commissioner Syed. Here. Commissioner Rain. Here. Commissioner Lynn. Here. Commissioner Richardson here and Commissioner Bevel is here at this time um, would ask you to uh, stand for the invocation by Commissioner Richardson and the Pledge of Allegiance following <coughs> oh I'm sorry that's okay Commissioner Groves will bring the invocation Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of living in a place where we are free to gather. May we wisely consider the requests before us. Help us to be unified in making the best possible decisions for our citizens as well as our city as a whole. Thank you for your guidance and protection on all gathered here this evening. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Okay. At this time, um, the uh, staff will, uh, I'm sorry, before we start our public hearing items, uh, we do need to have uh, approval of our meeting minutes for March 20th and March 27th. Um, so if the commissioners have any comments or additions or corrections to the minutes, please state so. If not, I need a motion for approval and a second. A motion to approve. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Alfonso. May I have a second? I second the motion. A second by Commissioner Lynn. We'll vote. Commissioner Groves? Aye. Commissioner Alfonso? Aye. Commissioner Syed? Aye. Commissioner Rain? Aye. Commissioner Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Bevel votes aye. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Okay, the minutes are approved as presented by a vote of 7 0. And our first public hearing item, um, I'm going to abstain due to the location of my own personal property. Um, in relationship to this case, and I'll turn this over to Commissioner Groves to conduct um, the hearing. It 
If the staff will present the case. Yes, this is a request um, for a zoning change from plan unit development commercial development to plan unit development commercial district for 105 Chief Sparger Road, KCC 23006. It is located here um, at the corner of Chief Sparger Road and Sandbar Lane. It is 1.94 acres in size and it does currently have the PUDC zoning. Um, our master plan does show it to be located in that Collierville Boulevard corridor. Currently, there are no structures on the property, and that's what it looks like currently. Um, previously proposed was three um, medical office office buildings you can see here. Um, and then this is just... Um, a statement of planning objectives explaining how they want to use one of the buildings to be a compounding pharmacy. Um, this is a proposed um, plan unit development commercial language. So the overall, the overlay district shall be subject to the CPO, professional office based zoning regulations. Um, and then specifically building one will be a compounding pharmacy and the other two buildings uh, would be allowed to have medical office and general office as well. This just states that as well. Um, additionally, there's been um, specific information about lighting, that there can't be any uh, maximum foot candle of 0 0.5 foot candles as measured from the residential property line, so there's no light shining from the commercial uh, development onto the residential that's around it. And I'll show you the plans here, but um, building one would be a one-story 6,100 square foot building. Uh, building two is a one-story 4,250 square foot building, and building three is a one-story 4,350 square foot building that's being proposed. Additionally, there will be, um, they are proposing a minimum eight-foot high masonry fence constructed along the south and east property line adjacent to the residential properties. And this is the site plan here showing the location of the buildings, how it would be laid out, and those setbacks. And this is the elevation exhibit showing the materials that um, will be used for the facades that they're proposing. And they've included a landscaping plan um, as well, and a drainage plan. And they did provide information for, um, they did do a tree survey and they have given some information for an uh, urban forestry plan. Um, staff did not receive any letters um, regarding this, um, this case, and staff is neutral on the request. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant here uh, to present their case? If you'll state your name and address before you give your presentation. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Robert Johnson. I live at 24 Fairgreen Trophy Club, Texas. Okay, so uh, I had the owner with me that actually owns the property. So we have bought the property and we're ready to move forward on developing the property. Can, can you speak into the microphone so we can all hear you? <clears throat> okay, you. can you hear me now? Yeah, much okay. better. So the, he owns the property. So it's not something we're in the future. We're looking to develop the property. And so what we looked at, his wife is a pharmacist, and she would like to do a compound pharmacy on the property. And it'll be one that's open for some people to come in and get the pharmacies, get their medicine, or we will deliver to them. But in the, in the whole, we'll be making medication for big products, I mean, shipping them out to more people than that we will have them come in. Um, the other properties, we have two other lots, and we're going to kind of, I mean, our main goal right now is the compound pharmacy. But we do have two other buildings that will be medical buildings in some way that will work with the pharmacy or work with seniors in the use of the property. Um, more about the building itself, we're just trying to do something that meets and develops with the Colleyville itself. Uh, the eight-foot fence all the way around the property is something that we were told we need to do. 
and we will do it if that's what the, re the requirements are. But also there is a real pretty wood fence on the south side of the property <clears throat> that if the homeowners would like to keep it, we would like to just do our part of maintenance for it, help fix it so we don't you know, disturb what they already have. But if we need to put a fence up, we will put a fence up. Another thing we'd like to ask for is a desail lane coming down Cheeks Park Road so the people coming into our property, we can slow down, kind of get off the road and not be clogging up the traffic <coughs> on the road. Um, anything else, if y'all have any questions for me? Um, th does the commission have any questions at this time? Yeah. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. Um, as far as the three buildings, will they be phased in, or will you build them pretty much all at the same time, or, or how will you, how will you uh, build those? Well, right now, we're just looking at the compound pharmacy. Okay. And if we could build all three of them at one time, um, I think we'd rather do it, build, build one, get it all s situated, and then start you know, getting tenants for the other one so we don't have a bunch of empty buildings in the area. But we are ready and assuming if we had people come to us, we would want to go ahead and fill them up. Okay, I was just wondering how you know empty spaces are going to look as far as uh, you know overall look of the of the development there, and will will you have those graded and? Yes, or, we, we okay. will build. We will take it to a pad site, so we will have okay. it all okay. ready to go. Utilities ran to the property and everything. Yes. Okay, okay, and then just one last question, um, and I'm kind of reading what the, some of the things city manager had had commented on about the facade materials. And and I, I think I've stated it before, but the, the siding to me doesn't look, you know, kind of like what Colleyville, kind of what we expect. And um, he recommended more stone. And then also, I don't know why, is the standard 90% masonry bin? Is that kind of what we would want it to be? Correct. Okay. And I, I would like to see it 90% masonry as, okay. as the standard is and a little more stone. Other than that, that's the only comments I have. But okay. Do you have any comments on that? Whether well, I mean, we were more than happy to do that. Uh, okay. We were just trying to put a little wood, you know, you know, dark stain to give it a more modern look. Is what we ran to it. Now, for me being a builder on it, I'd much rather put a masonry product there because it's lower maintenance. But what we could do is do brick and paint some of the bricks because we do want to give it a little bit of a contrast and with some gray colors, brown colors, <clears throat> but to make it look really nice. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Uh, what kind of compounding uh, do you want to do it there? Okay. There's a, let me read here for you. There's all, you know, everything is what they'll be able to make for you. One of the things that when I sat down with them and talked to them, they were telling me about is how they can, if you come in, and they would be able to take your blood and spin it, put it in jars, do all that, and make you really something for you, for your you know, eye drops or anything, but they'll have the capability to do stuff like that inside their facility. And then also, there's fixed to be new standards to pharmacy as far as about the sterilness, as how do you get rid of your medicine, how do you do this? They're going to be up to speed with everything since we're building it at this time. All the new standards that all the other pharmacies are going to have to come up to, we're going to be meeting it at phase one. So would you have a plan to build a vault for controlled substances? Whatever, whatever we have to do, whatever we have to oh, do. You can, have, you can call the pharmacy. Uh, yeah. So uh, whatever the regulations are is what we will have to meet. And the regulations are coming out in 2023. So specialty so, pharmacies usually uh, does compounding, but they are very specific about medicines. Yes. If it's fertility or uh, treatment for cancer treatment, for whatever other treatments, yep. it's very specific. That's Correct. what I want to ask. So, what kind of pharmacy is that? Well, one of their sterile rooms. So we have one big room that'll be nothing but a sterile room. So all the drugs in there and everything that goes through there is sterile and cleaned and everything. And then when it's deposited, all the air that's being made, everything stays 
inside of a system and it doesn't get out in the rest of the property or rest of the building itself. Now, there's well, a- That's the state standards and they inspect everything, not the city. Correct, yes. Well, I mean, ours, you got good questions for me here, but on the pharmacy side of it, I know anything that is by rules and regulations, we will have to meet. So if you're asking, you know, for whatever medication we're doing, they'll have to turn that into the boards and they will tell us what we have to do. And usually uh, specialty pharmacies and compounding pharmacies doesn't have uh, drive through windows. Would you have a plan to put a drive through window? I'm sorry, I don't understand. A, a, a drive through pharmacy? No. No? No drive through pharmacy. Do any of the other commissioners have any questions for the applicant? <laughs> okay, at this time, I'm going Thank you. to. Or to am, I, am I excused? Yeah, you're excused, okay. yes. I'm going to open the public hearing. I've got uh, one citizen uh, that wishes to speak, Michael Roberts. How are you? Uh, my name is Michael Roberts, and I've been a resident of Colleyville for over 25 years. I live at 3717 Sandbar Lane. Um, I'm here to talk on behalf of not doing this building in the, this area, and I'm speaking for not only me, but the families at 3716, 3719, and 3713. We are in, who are unable to attend today. We view this building as a commercial office park entry into our quiet neighborhood will create excess traffic caused by the number of employees at the commercial office park, vendor deliveries, and the total number of daily customer potential patients and others who would visit these facilities. Based on the drawn Robert Johnson's design of the office park, there will be 85 parking spots into the entrance that could possibly enter and exit on Sandbar Lane at any given time, which could be up to 85 vehicles. We'd also like to mention that our neighborhood has just come off of the, San, uh, the Cheeks Barter reconstruction area where they used our neighborhood as a cut through and we're just now getting back to normal. And we feel that putting this, this type of complex in here is gonna be undue excess traffic in our neighborhood. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak uh, to this uh, case. I'll close the public hearing at this time. We actually do have one. Did, did you, I'll reopen the public hearing at this time. Kathy Hadley, 204 Timberline Drive North, to represent myself. Um, the only comment I really have about this is, first of all, does something like this really go in a residential neighborhood or up against a residential neighborhood? Maybe on Highway 26 would be good. However, my concern is, have they done any research on these compounding pharmacies? There is one, I guess it may be even in Hearst, facing Colleyville. <laughs> right there on Highway 26, and we also have another one just off of Main Street here in downtown Colleyville, like but maybe Piazza Lane, I'm not real sure. So they need, they might wanna rethink doing a compounding pharmacy. We have two right here. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to this case? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Does the applicant have any responses to the uh, our previous two speakers that they'd like to comment on? So one of them is that we will only have 10 to 15 employees at the compound pharmacy. The compound pharmacy will operate from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Monday through Friday, so it won't be open on Saturdays, the weekends, or anything like that. The uh, 
the reason we have 80 something parking spaces is because that's what the city requires. Uh, so we're just doing what the city requires us to do on the properties. Okay, thank you. The commissioner's discussion. I'd just like to confirm with staff that this is this is already zoned PUDC commercial, correct? We're not changing changing the actual zoning. So the is the way that the planning and developments work is that each one is its own customized zoning district. So this will be a new PUDC to replace completely the one that it currently exists. Uh, so the, the other exhibit that you saw is, f to the best of our knowledge, the one that was approved back in the 80s, 1985. So not exactly the same, similar, but not the same. And so because they are very specific ordinances, anything that doesn't really match, it gets, in the, you can amend them, but in this case it made sense to replace it completely. Um, and so that's truly what's happening. It's, it's really a complete change of zoning district, but they're called the same thing. Uh, in some communities they actually number them and it's an easy way to keep track of them. Colleyville did not do that. Uh, but it will end up being its own zoning district, very customized district for this property if approved. Yeah. Well, um, we are not getting the clear picture of what kind of pharmacy it would be. Not the whole details. So I'm not comfortable in approving that. Okay. Any other comments, Commissioner Lynn? Uh, um, are we able to add the, the, I guess the line item of the 90% increased on the masonry to approve or disapprove the vote? Uh, we could, a, I believe we could add that as a condition. Yes, we can. Uh, so we have a line, uh, a, a regulation written in that it would be allowed to go below that and we can just strike that. Right. But you can just make a condition that they comply with the 90%. Right. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for the applicant. Uh, are you expecting the city to pay or the county to pay for that turnout lane? That, and, and you are aware that there's going to be some major construction. I don't know if that portion of Cheeks Barger, but Cheeks Barger is cited for, uh, I think, widening in the next year or two, Qu quite an extensive project. You should come up here. Oh, you can come back up if you'd like to. So you're saying they're fixing to do more work on the highway, or I, I mean, don't, I don't know the specifics, or or I know that Cheeks Bargo was closed down for right. quite a long time, mm -hmm. but I do know that there was some county money that was in a county bond issue and city money, and I even think some federal money to widen Cheek Sparger. I don't know if it's that particular area. Uh, it, the city may know more about that, but it's something to keep in mind. I'm kind of in the same boat that you are. I, I know that there is still a project slated for Cheek Sparger. Uh, I think what has already done, been accomplished is straightening out that S curve so right. that it's longer, so mm -hmm. it's not as dramatic. Uh, I think that's all that's been done so far. And so as far as the limits, I don't know if it includes all the way as far west as this intersection or not. It may not. Um, but a substantial part further east, I know, is, is just not sure if this is part of that limit. I don't think it is, but I I'm don't not hold that, me to that. I don't think it is, but our yeah. goal would be regardless. We're not asking for money from the city. We would like to put a diesel lane in at our cost. On the property, when we turn to put our turn lane in, we just like to do it ourselves. And if you all come back and tear it out, okay. And I believe that's a county road. I can't speak to that, but that's there's uh, probably a little bit more involved than than you just going in and putting in a diesel. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll have to do it once again. What the city requires us to do when we do everything. Yeah, I think the city does have primary control over that road. Okay, um, there may be because of the level of road where funding dollars might be available through grants and other things, but I think the city does have primary maintenance over the Cheeks Barger. Uh, and so as far as a deceleration lane or something to this um, scope, I think it's just making sure 
our city engineer's office reviews it and it complies with any spacing criteria we have um, from an intersection to make sure there's enough room to give sufficient room to decelerate and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think the city has control over those decisions. Okay. Okay. Um, I have I have a couple concerns. Uh, the um, to speak to the uh, one individual that was in opposition. Um, Building that in three phases to me is problematic. I mean, they've lived through uh, road construction fever, so you'll get one building done, then you might build the second building, maybe the third building. It's it's basically endless construction. Um, the other thing is there are on the eastern edge of that property where building two is, there's quite a few trees, and I was wondering if there's any way you could possibly move that building forward and reallocate your parking spaces more to the front to preserve the trees in the back. That would give a little bit of a buffer to those people that, to the property to the east. Um, and then the, um, the thing I would say to uh, Mr. Roberts is uh, if those people are objecting to it, if they would send letters to the city uh, expressing their opinion because it will go before uh, the mayor and council and they need something in writing or an email or something to say why they're opposed to it. Does anybody have anything else at this time? The lady that's the farmer, she's here now. If you would like to direct questions, and I couldn't answer to her. Okay. Let's go, go out. Your name and address. The name and address. Oh, can you state your name and address, please? Uh, Mansi Kumar, 2205 North Pearson Lane in Westlake, Texas. What kind of pharmacy you want to build there? It's going to be a compounding pharmacy. What kind of compounding you want to do? Both there? sterile and non-sterile compounding. Is there any controlled substance there? Controlled substance, there will be a control uh, prescriptions as well there. That's basically the commercially available control prescriptions. Is there, uh, you wanna do the, since you're a pharmacist, you know, if they're doing compounding, they're very specific pharmacies like fertility treatment pharmacies or uh, chemo treatment pharmacies and all this stuff. So. Uh, there will not be any chemo compounding, but like the fertility drugs, whatever is commercially available, we can certainly, you know, provide that. Okay. And is there, uh, do you have any, con has a plan to contract with any hospice care? We, we can definitely look into that as well, yes. For the hospice just, care as yes. well? Yes, ma'am. But, but not the chemo drugs? Not chemo drugs, no. Because that requires a special kind of facility. And mainly the compounding pharmacies, they don't have that kind of, uh, you know, necessary um, guidelines and, you know, the rooms equipped. You need all that, so. I saw some of the compounding pharmacies, they have over-the-counter stuff as well. Yes, we'll be providing all that over-the-counter medications and as well. It was for all Medicare, Medicaid? Yes, ma'am. All the kind of person? Yes, ma'am. All insurance, welcome, yes. And... Also, the Medicaid Star Plus uh, seniors as well? Yes, ma'am, yeah. You basically have to do the contract with all the you know, uh, agencies, yes. So if I understood what, uh, in this last exchange that you're going to have retail, uh, be a retail pharmacy and have retail over-the-counter medicines there as well? Yes, so it's going to be retail compounding pharmacy. So it will provide both commercially available medications, any other over-the-counter medications that you get get at any pharmacy, and also, you know, sterile and non-sterile compounding. Okay, okay. One other, one other thought I, I had is that the building, that the way it's designed kind of stands out as being very utilitarian, very plain, and, and that area is, is, as the one opposition speaker had mentioned and, and his neighbors, it's fairly residential there. 
would would you all consider some type of different design to be more consistent with the the architecture that's there in terms of style i think a good example of something that we approved a couple of uh, a couple of months ago, maybe a year ago, is off of Glade Road, Graham Hart Builders. He has a building that's got a little bit, the roof has a little bit of pitch, a little bit more design. It was done tastefully. But I, I think the design is is very sterile and stark as you're transitioning to that uh, that area of town. And it, there's a lot of redevelopment of those older homes that are being torn down and, and uh, newer homes being put up to be more consistent with that architecture to blend in. I mean, you're going to be a, a, a retail pharmacy, which does con give me some concern about traffic, but I, I would suggest some type of redesign instead of that sterile, basically, this is just my opinion, very boxy looking structure, and that would probably get you into the 90% plus on the, on the masonry and stone as well. I mean, we can look at doing something like that as a different elevation. We've done, and when you say residential for 30 something years, that's all I did was a residential architect in all this area. I've probably built 500 homes here or drawn 500 homes here. So if we need to do something, you know, definitely we need to talk to the clients and see what their thoughts are. But if, I mean, we'd like, we want to fit in. We don't want to be, you know, this you know an oddball out there so we, yeah. we will work with you guys but at the same time we want to create what her dream and her husband's dream is on the property is it a standalone pharmacy or is a part of franchisee or no it's just going to be one store just be one yes, store no, yes, just so one store. um where do you practice right now right now i'm practicing at a compounding pharmacy oh uh, here in, in texas in plano in plano yes ma'am and it's not the part of any other pharmacy, correct? No, ma'am. Yeah. And would you consider moving those buildings around to preserve more of the trees, particularly on the eastern side? At one point, we did have the building slid back further or slid up closer to the front and had parking up in the front. But uh -huh. we were trying to get more greenscape on the front of the property and then put the parking in the back. So when we do our, I mean, the residents will be very happy. The way we're going to do our lining, because there's a big greenscape, as you can see around the back, it's just that one little area where they're turning. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that look like a park area ourselves. Well, there's some, I think there's some big trees back that you're going to have to cut down right there that is is a big. <laughs> well, it, well, here's, a, and I'll be very honest with you. Once you go in and you start developing a piece of property, and you have a 25-year-old tree sitting there, or not 25, but a big tree sitting there, and all of a sudden we get to, we start putting landscape around them, you start watering them, you start doing like that. Those trees, they stress out. So it's better for us to go in and build something right, build and put enough trees in to replace it and landscape it. But, I mean, we would love to save all the big trees, but it's just, I mean. Yeah, I would, I would need to see those buildings moved back off the east, off that eastern wall uh, quite a bit, and, and, the, and the architecture changed to be more consistent. One of the, the themes this city is take it to the next level, and I, I think to, to blend in there, we do need to take it to the next level, and, and I would like to see all three buildings at once. I don't, you know, I'm not getting into the finances, but the people on Sandbar Lane are gonna be living in uh, another construction nightmare, which we have to protect the citizens of, of the town. So at, at this point, I can't say, oh, this is a great plan. I would, I would say you need to do some more work and, and come back and revisit us with, with some of the issues that, that we've raised. So <clears throat> let me ask Ashley, so you're saying that we need to build all three at one time? Yeah, I... I you know, you could do whatever you want. We, we've had another case I'm looking at where we approved this whole thing and it petered out and never got completed. Uh -huh. And I think to be fair to the citizens, it's, you know, build all three at once. I mean, you know as well as I do, they're not going to get cheaper to build. Or we, have, or we have one building with a big concrete jungle around it with, you know, weeds growing up where the pad's going to go. I think we'll keep your landscape pretty well. 
I'm just saying. Okay, I understand. I understand. Well, that would be something also that we'd have to talk. Okay. I, I can't tell you that right now. But no, I understand. I understand, but I think it needs some more work. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I take a motion to table. Mr. Johnson, if it's okay with you, we'd like to uh, table this and let you guys do a little bit more work on it and come back to us again, see if you can accommodate some of some of our wish list. Okay. Can I make a motion? Yeah, please, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I make a motion to table case ZC 23-006 for May May 8th. May 8th uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. I'll second. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Syed uh, presented a motion. Uh, Commissioner Richardson seconded it. I'll put it to a vote. Commissioner Alfonso. Aye. Commissioner Syed? Aye. Commissioner Rain? Aye. Commissioner Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Be Bevel abstained? Commissioner Richardson? Aye. And Commissioner Groves votes aye. The resolution uh, passes uh, 6 0 1. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Groves. Um, the next item on our agenda is item 2B, consideration of a special use permit for alcoholic beverage sales for on-premises consumption on a portion of Lot 23, Village at Colleyville Condos, located at 62 Main Street, Suite 100, Case ZC 23-007. The staff will present. Yes, this is a request for special use permit for alcoholic beverage sales for a new restaurant called La Panela for 62 Main Street. It's actually located here in the village. Um, it has planned unit development commercial zoning and is commercial in nature. Um, let me go to the street view so you can see the building. Um, they did provide a statement of planning objectives um, that discusses the, um, the restaurant and um, the background of um, where they're... Um, where they currently have some restaurants. They actually have restaurants in Europe. Um, they do need to have this special use permit to serve those beverages. And um, there is a private school here in the village. So um, we had to do some research to see because there is a distance requirement for, um, for schools, churches, and hospitals. Um, but because the enrollment of the private school is under 100 um, students, um, they will not have to then ask for or need a variance for that distance requirement. Um, this is the proposed um, SUP language. Um, the hours of operation shall not exceed um, Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Staff did not receive any letters from the um, neighboring, the neighbors, and staff does recommend approval of the request. Thank you. Um, is the applicant here? And if so, would you like to speak at this time? Hello, uh, my name is Marta Lopez. I live in 4109 Toilet Trail in Plano, Texas. I'm the manager of uh, the restaurant group uh, called Bocaleon. Uh, we are a restaurant group from Spain, and we will be opening our first restaurant here in the United States, here in Colleyville. Uh, our group currently has uh, 10 restaurants in Spain, in Madrid, Barcelona, and Galicia, and one more in Paris. And we will be opening four more in Spain in the next month. 
Uh, we are a family-owned company. Uh, our CEO is actually the son of the woman who opened the first restaurant in a small village in Spain 34 years ago. We want uh, our restaurants to be welcoming and comfortable for families. Uh, we like to think that uh, our restaurants will be the place uh, where a family wants to celebrate the grandma's birthday with all the family or the children's graduation. Uh, when we're looking for places to buy, uh, what we liked most about Colleville was the opportunity to be a member of the community. Uh, in big cities like Dallas or Houston, uh, you are just one of the hundreds. But here we believe that we will be able to have a closer and more relationship with our customers and the people who live around us. Um, as I say, uh, we are a family-owned business and uh, we always look for special and charming locations to open our restaurants. Uh, for months, we have been looking for a location that will be on par with the rest of our restaurants. And when we saw Coldeville, we knew uh, we had found the perfect place. Uh, our plan is to open a restaurant that will offer traditional food from Spain, especially from the region of Galicia, uh, tapas, meat, fish, and desserts. And we will also offer beer, cocktails, and premium wines. And this is the reason we are applying for a special use permit. Thank you. Um, the, do um, the commissioners have any questions for the applicant at this time? Do you, do you have any information on your timeline? When you're thinking to uh, start or? Yeah. Uh, not yet, because we are working with the architect and doing some kind of remodeling. But I think that probably uh, not before September. Thank you for choosing Colleville. <laughs> <laughs> we are very excited to be here, really. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anything else? For the applicant, it, that's been a restaurant before. It's been empty for quite a while. Is the re are you using the existing equipment? Or are you going? Are you going to have to replace a lot of the equipment in there? Uh, the the former owners bought the space to be a coffee shop, but they couldn't open it because the COVID. And there is no equipment site. It's just uh, we can also only uh, use the um, air conditioning uh, heating system, but there is no kitchen, there is no bench, there is anything. And with, with the go ahead, you won't have a problem getting that equipment in a in a reasonable time period. <laughs> we are not sure yet. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm just wondering. I, we've been told that maybe in, it's two three months. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Looking You're forward welcome. to it. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, well, I, I would like to also uh, thank you for coming to Colleyville. And um, I'm going to open a public hearing at this time. Public hearing is open. I have no cards for this item. Is there anyone present wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. The public hearing is closed. Um, do we have discussion among the commissioners? OK. Then at this time, um, we'll ask for a motion and a second. I make a motion to approve KZC 23-007. Second. OK, I have a motion by Commissioner Syed and a second by Commissioner Rain. Um, take a vote. Commissioner Gross? Aye. Commissioner Alfonso? Aye. Commissioner Syed? Aye. Commissioner Rain? Aye. Commissioner Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Commissioner Bevel votes aye, and, it, and the uh, permit is approved by a vote of 7 0. Okay. The next item on the agenda is um, consideration of a special use permit for a commercial accessory building on lots 10 and 11, Block 1, Thompson Terraces Subdivision, located at 5100 Thompson Terrace, KCC 23-008. Uh, the staff will present. Okay, this is a request for a special use permit for an accessory okay. building, 5100 Thompson Terrace. It's located here. Actually, not too far from where we are in the village, kind of across the street off of um, Thompson Terrace. It does have that neighborhood commercial um, zoning, and it is commercial in nature. Um, there is an existing um, business there, um, Modern Geosciences. 
Um, and they are requesting this special use permit so they can locate an 1,800 square foot accessory building. Um, in the land development code, there are conditions for those commercial accessory buildings. Um, and that's on the screen here. And then this is just the survey showing the existing um, building currently. Um, in green is the 1,800 square foot building that they are requesting. And the proposed um, special use permit language um, does spell out that, that building specifically for the modern geosciences um, business. Um, it shall conform with the exhibits that you're going to see next. And um, they have to meet all the other requirements of the land development code. Um, so they are proposing an accessory building um, that would look like this with these types of elements. And this is just a different angle. This is the west side of the building. Um, there is a large floodplain there, which is why they're requesting to push the building um, closer to the front of the property so it's out of that floodplain area. And staff did not receive any letters regarding this request, and staff is neutral on the request. Thank you. Is the applicant present, and would you like to speak? Good evening. Uh, I'm Kenneth Tram, and I'm the uh, firm owner. Uh, we're an environmental engineering firm, uh, and uh, so I own the property at 5100 Thompson Terrace. Um, Jackie's been incredibly helpful in working with our staff. You know, initially we actually just wanted to expand the building. We had purchased the building and the adjacent lot. Uh, and we started the engineering firm here in Colleyville in 2011 uh, when we looked at a lot of different cities and places to be. This is one we wanted to be in. So we began on Industrial Boulevard. Uh, we were smaller and we've grown to where we are uh, now. Uh, and we've worked with the city before, uh, long ago when uh, oil and gas was happening. Mm. Uh, if anybody remembers that, uh, there was some air quality concern. That's the specialty of our firm, uh, is air quality monitoring. And uh, so we kept some people in check for you, if you may remember. Um, uh, that said, we really just wanted to expand the building a little bit, but it turns out as you can see, the amount of blue uh, that crept in in the meantime after buying the property, which limited what we can do. So we were told we could not. Uh, without rebuilding everything and building it much higher, uh, and the cost then becomes prohibitive for us to be there. Uh, and so we are looking for ways that we can at least maximize and continue to be a neighbor. Uh, and the best we came up with was, okay, if we have an accessory building, we can take a lot of our air quality equipment, which takes up space, and that can be stored in that building. Uh, and also would allow us to move some of the other things that are external in our yard into the building too to be a little more probably attractive for the neighbors. Uh, and so what we've done with the city and working back and forth is to try to find a way that we can make the building match everything, which is, you know, add brick, add windows. We wouldn't normally, you know, need a, uh, you know, windows on an accessory building, but uh, we were encouraged to do so. And we, we want to fit in and, you know, be a good neighbor there. So. Um, other than that, I'll quit talking and I'll take any questions and I appreciate your consideration of the item. Okay, well, we thank you so much for uh, wanting to have your business in Colleyville and we appreciate your efforts for uh, improving air quality. Um, are there questions for the applicant from commissioners? Commissioner Alfonso? If you, if, uh, if you had this building approved, how much longer do you think you would be able to s sustain being in this property? So, I mean, we probably could be in perpetuity, potentially. Um, you know, we've grown enough that we've opened a second office in San Antonio. The uh, Many large municipalities need some of the things that we do. We're, we're out of the box thinkers, uh, you know, some engineers and scientists. We're, we're nerds, really. Uh, <laughs> but we're quiet nerds. We make good neighbors, we think. Um, but uh, honestly, it would make this usable. Right now, mm -hmm. um, probably we would have to move. And so it's, it's not that we need a lot more space. We just need enough, just enough, and this would make that possible. Gotcha. So if your business, though, continues to grow, is this going to work? It will, because the beyond what we're doing here, we would open offices in other places if we had to. This is just we're on top of each other with equipment. And we just want to not be on top of each other with equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now you 
You own the whole piece of property here. It's, yes, we do. It's all one lot? It's all, um, yes. Or it, there's a, some parcel language that's unique that Jackie may be able to tell you, but we own all of it, yes. Okay, okay. And unfortunately, the floodplain causes you some problems with locating this building. That's correct. Um, okay, I, um, I can see that the fact that you own this property, you've invested in Colleyville. Yes. And so uh, we want to do what we can to make your, uh, to make your stay, um, your home, uh, work for you. Um, is there, for some reason, when I look at the renderings, um, I see that you've added windows and that um, you're adding some columns here that possibly could be brick. Um, I, for some reason, this looks very um, industrial to me. So the... I mean, this is our best effort to make a rendering, right? So this is not the kind of environmental engineering doesn't really make us great at this. But the brick, the same brick that you have on the existing building, okay. we would match there, painted the same. Um, so the gray is an attempt to match the same coloring. Um, so you would be fully bricked uh, around it. In fact, the only uh, leniency we would ask for is the, you can kind of see the fence that needs some repair right behind it, right? Mm -hmm. um, Right, so that fence, that neighbor is somebody we got to know when uh, Highway 26 was being expanded, uh -huh. and they lost all their parking. Uh, and so, uh, you know, as a, a hair place, they came to us and said, hey, can we, they needed access to build a bridge so they could even use the lot next door, which mm -hmm. I know is zoned residential, but has a, an awful lot of parking, as you may know, because it supports their business there. So I don't think their long-term plan is that it be residential. I don't, the city, you guys would be the ones that know what the long-term plan is uh, for that area. Um, but the cost to do a, a masonry fence for that roughly 100 feet is probably as much as the building uh, that we're doing there. And so we'd like to at least visit with them if they're comfortable with a different separator. I know I'm making an ask <laughs> right now as you consider this, but I want to be, uh -huh. I, how can you help uh, accommodate us? We'd want our money going into the accessory building, making it look as presentable as possible. And if the neighbors uh, were we're fine with it, you know, doing something else in between that was both cost effective and then met your goals. Okay. Now is that fence, does that belong to you or does that fence belong to the neighbors? Um, I don't know if either of us would claim it. Um, but, um, <laughs> but we, we did build a new fence, you know, on the back part of the property before. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe it's 50, 50. I don't know who, who owns it, but it could be us. It okay. Be well, um, well, uh, I know Go something ahead. about that. Uh, if Ben confirms it, if the um, the the pole is on your side, you see the pole means you own the fence, correct? That's for residential. I don't know about commercial <laughs> land. So the city actually does not get involved with the ownership part of it. Uh, we make an assumption that it's on the property line, and it's a shared issue between both. Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, we're we're basically at this point looking at the building. Um, yes, ma'am. I mean, the fence de definitely plays a part in it, but we're considering this building here. So um, we'll just stick to that right now. Um, are those planter boxes there? Um, are they wooden or? I don't. You know, or? these are conceptual in nature. If you yes. told me you like metal planter boxes, well, so do I. <laughs> um, but you know. Uh, I would say we're more minimalistic and zero scape. Uh, in fact, you know, the, the whole area where you see where there's parking, right, it, it has not been developed yet just because we were waiting until we had a development plan and then the parking would uh, be built around it. Our intent here is to actually do a pervious pavement. pavement. As an environmental engineering firm, we have to live, right, practice what we preach. Uh, I saw that you have a few parking spots, by the way. I hear they're a pervious pavement. I'm proud of you guys. Um, and so we would build that in here as well. Um, so you'll see some more improvement of that property that goes along with the accessory building. Well, I, I, you know, I understand your need and we want you to be able to use your property. Um, a lot of that area is older. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
we what we're trying to accomplish is we definitely don't want to go and try to match that. We want to kind of, uh, um, as our mayor said at the state of the city, yeah. take it to the next level. So yeah. um, this this building would be an improvement um, to what's already back there behind that. And I know there are some new. I know there are some new homes back there. Isn't there at least one? Uh, New home back there. Um, I haven't been on that on that street in a while, but yeah. anyway. Um, okay. Um, will there be landscaping around the building? Maybe. So we would do. We would match the kind of landscaping that's around the existing structure, which is a okay. lot of rock, uh -huh. uh, and then you know zero scaped plants, right? So um, okay. I'm a big fan of cacti and succulent. I'm guilty. Um, so I like them just because they survive no matter what I do. Um, so like we've has we have you have some yucca facts on in front. We've obviously got some uh, paddle cactus. So similar in nature to that. Okay. Okay. So everything consistent with the existing building. That's exactly right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else, uh, Commissioner Richardson? Yes. Thank you. Um, I have uh, no problem with the concept or the use of the lot. Um, the the building just looks a little bit. Um, plain. I don't know how else to say it. The pit, maybe it's the pitch. Maybe it's the lean-to. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem like the commercial kind of accessory buildings we expect. And I know you know where the location is and everything, but it's just it just for the little tweaking. I, I don't know. Maybe an architect uh, or I don't know if you all agree, but it's just not quite the look. Um, if it's brick, I mean that's great, and it's just just something's not quite what I would expect. Do you guys have any comments or? Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with Scotty. I, I think it would help us, it helped me into, personally. Uh, you've given some hypothetical ideas about what you would like to do to dress this up and make it fit into the neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, with landscaping, uh, et cetera. And I think if you can develop it to the point where it's a little bit more specific along the lines of what you visualize, it would help help me and perhaps others as well. Okay. Is there something specific as a non-architect? So be help, uh, uh, guidance, uh, it would be great. <laughs> no, I think it's the, the pitch is really flat, and maybe that. And just to lean to, maybe it's... Uh, uh, and, uh, we had a, a taller one. It was only working with staff on okay. making it less visible to the well, surrounding neighbors is what brought it down. Well, I could be wrong, but then the other part is the... Uh, the it looks like a lean-to where you have the porch and maybe bring the um, roof line you know, across or maybe build it yeah. so that it kind of blends into that peak from the front to that peak. I guess that's what I'm trying to say, and I'm not an architect either. Right? Sure. Um, so it doesn't look like a patio. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, You know, and then the patio was only added to make it more look more residential. Oh, it, I actually originally had it with no patio. It's a great idea. Right, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, it, I just, mean, it strikes me that if you extend the eave. So if we took the angled top out, Instead yeah. of having that straight line. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. what he's I think about. that would help. There you go. That's actionable. I can do some on that pitch. Right. Yeah. I'll echo with my basically everything my colleague said. As you know, if you've been there a while, that completion of 26 Thompson Terrace has kind of rejuvenated itself with. We hope so. Yes. You know, with a lot of the professional buildings and everything. We heard a rumor about we might be called Main Street at some point. Is that still true? <laughs> it saves a traffic light. Um, so. <laughs> I agree with them. You know, let's let's take it like Commissioner Bevel said and my colleagues. Let's take it to the next level and make Thompson Terrace one of the streets that people want to drive down because it's done so well. And I think you can do that for us. So what we're asking, if I may, is just to extend that pitch and remove that kind of patio cover looking. Okay. Is is that something you would be willing to do without too I, much effort and too no, much expense? I, I, no, I, I think that's actionable, and it's the kind of feedback we want to hear. Yeah. Okay. We, hit, we hit the target. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, that's good. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. I don't have any cards on this, but if anyone wishes to speak, I'm going to open the public hearing. <coughs> public hearing is open. Anyone wishing to speak may come forward at this time. Seeing no one, I close the public hearing. The public hearing is closed. Um, discussion with the commissioners, please. We can. We can is this something we should table? That's what, I was, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And, uh, 
Um, I don't. Okay. I don't know. I'm just asking. You okay. Um, is is there a time constraint, sir? Uh, do, are you? I know you don't want to live with all that equipment. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, if, if, I mean, if is can, there room on the? I think we could get a rendering that includes the specifics that you've asked for. Again, we're not artists. Uh, my wife would tell you that first. Um, but I, I think we can work with the you know the firm that's helping us with this and and bring that out I, and probably in a week or so I don't know when your next meeting is and if there's room on it for us okay of course but, but that's certainly fine for us okay. we've we've been trying for six months or a year you've been very patient okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay well it, we might we might just push it out a couple of weeks and okay. and see if we can get you or maybe to the next the next meeting is uh, yeah. public meeting May eighth okay. So if we yeah. can table until then and you can give us that new rendering, then we that might just that. be the trick. What about asking to continue trying to get replatted together? Yeah. We need to get that, that oh, to be done regardless. Also, okay. uh, the replat on the property, Okay. Um, if you can get that, because we don't want to have that condition lingering when we vote. If we vote to approve it, we would like for that plat to be uh Replat. Make it contingent. No, just make it. So you might as well work on it now and got it. Try to get it done. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for reminding me. All okay. Right. Very well. Have a good evening. Um, uh, before that, I have a question with the staff. <coughs> uh, is there any, uh, you know, accessory building has twelve hundred square foot uh, limit for residential? Is it for commercial as well? No, there's not a limitation anymore. Um, it's really just those conditions that we identified. It's by special use permit. So, so I think that gives the flexibility to make sure it's just going to be compatible with the site. Uh, but there's not really like a 4% or uh, a maximum square footage. It's just making sure it's compatible. I just want to confirm it for the audience. Yeah. Thank you so much. OK, so I think we're ready for a motion. OK. I move that we table. Uh, case ZC23-008 until, what is the next date? May 8th. May 8th until May 8th. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Lynn and a second by Commissioner Gross to table case ZC23-008 to the May 8th meeting. We'll take a vote. Commissioner Gross. Aye. Commissioner Alfonso? Aye. Commissioner Syed? Aye. Commissioner Rain? Aye. Commissioner Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Bevel votes aye. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Okay. That item is tabled to the May 8th meeting by a vote of 7 0. Okay. Our next item is consideration of a zoning request from AG Agriculture. Agricultural to R30 Single Family Residential Zoning District for Tract 1B1, 1C1, 1B2, and 1B3, Abstract 294, Robert Channing Survey, located at 2417 Wilkes Drive, Case ZC23-009. The staff will present the case at this time. I guess this is a request to rezone from Agricultural to R30 um, Single Family Residential Zoning. It's located here, it has the ag zoning, and then it also is, um, the master plan has it as residential in use, and you can see here where it's located. The size of the property is 11.94 acres in size, and the proposal, this proposal, um, has 11 um, single family lots. The entrance and exit would be located along um, Wilkes right there. Um, and it does not include an additional piece off of Pool Road. Again, this is straight zoning, so it's um, the, the average lot size would be for this proposal is 41,887 square feet. The lots range in size from 30,461 square feet to 56,162 square feet. Um, this is the drainage plan as well as the utility plan, and then they did provide a tree survey. Um, the staff did receive um, a number of letters in opposition. 
So this is the 500 feet, and then staff did also receive a number of letters that are located within that 200 feet. And because 20% um, of the adjacent land area is in opposition, it does um, put this um, case into requiring supermajority at city council. Um, staff is neutral on the request. And I can... Okay, and... Um we have two cases actually for the same property, um, two different requests, and the citizens have, um, they have signed up to, to speak to, and um, not speak, um, to both issues at the same time. So can we consider these cases together, and would you like to go ahead and present the other case as well? I can do that. So Madam Chair, I think we can present both items, but each one will require its own motion and vote. Right, right, as far as the motion goes. But as far as the public hearing goes, we can combine them. Yeah, and talking with the city attorney, I think that's appropriate considering the situation. Uh, I suppose we can always, if, if it becomes too cumbersome, we can separate them if it doesn't work. But Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine, just as long as it's clear when they come up to speak that they're speaking on both or if they have questions about both, and then make sure that the applicant realizes that he's presenting both, but as long as our votes are separate. Yes. Okay. Okay, does everyone understand what we're trying to accomplish here? Get time. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, you want to go ahead and read the second case? I'll leave that up to her. Sure. This is a consideration of a zoning change from agricultural and... Um, RE single family estate residential to PUDR plan unit development residential zoning district for tract 1B1, 1C1, 1B2, and 1B3. Abstract 294 Robert Chowning survey and lot 1 block 1 zero edition located at 2417 Wilkes Drive and 6900 Pool Road, KCC 2310. Um, I'll just jump right ahead. So this includes that other piece of land off of Pool Road. And this concept plan, or this option, has 14 lots. Um, and this is a PUD, so there are additional things that are, um, that are um, included in this type of um, ordinance. So um, this is the site data here, and it does show the amount of open space is just about 20%. Um, the minimum lot area, the largest lot area, and then the average um, lot area is just going to be about almost um, 29,000 square feet. And then we've also included the, um, the draft ordinance and the conditions of that ordinance that it would have 14 lots, would have common open space area. Um, these would be the dimensional requirements of those lots and the setbacks. And then the screening as well as um, the open space And then as another, um, in here it gets into the, um, you know, the architectural features of the proposed homes and um, the street design as well. Um, this is a drainage plan for that concept, utility plan. They did provide a tree survey. Um, staff did receive a number of uh, letters in opposition and um, more than 20% of the adjacent land area is in opposition, so it does trigger the supermajority vote at city council, and staff is neutral on the request. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, staff, can we get some clarification? It appears that 2E was actually tabled at some point. Does it need to be removed from the table? Is or is that leftover language? At the end of the uh, description for 2E, our agenda says remove item from the table. Apparently that was old language. Leftover language. Okay, so this item is not on the table. Thank you. At this time, we'll ask the applicant then to come forward and speak on the case, and on both cases. Oh, you got it, sorry. Hi, Madam Chair, member of the commission, uh, members of the commission, good to see you all here. I see a new face. Uh, welcome. Um, sorry to uh, be bringing this to you again. I know it's uh, we've spent a lot of time on this already, 
but um, I think it's probably for the better. Uh, we, after we last saw you, we took it to council and um, we got a lot of comments and I think it's probably appropriate that it comes back to you all first. Uh, we have tried our best to address those comments that we got and uh, we would hope that you all would look at this with an open mind and try and find what is a the best and possible solution here to this uh, to this property. Um, the um, we know we have neighbor opposition. We're always going to have neighbor opposition on this, and we're sorry about that. But um, it, at council, I think it became clear that what they wanted was for the city to go purchase this property and make a park or, or wildlife preserve on it. And wouldn't we all like that for the city to buy property next to us and, and do that? But uh, we told them that we were open to anyone that wanted to purchase the property, but we received absolutely no communication that way. And we've also talked with the management of the city and they made it clear in no uncertain terms that the city had no intention to purchase this property. And as a long time resident of Collierville, I'm glad of that. Uh, I don't want my tax dollars trying to solve every zoning issue by purchasing the property. Um, so where does that leave us? That leaves us with how do we solve this and, and find the best solution on this property. And so we have taken a good faith effort to uh, try to address, as far as we can, the comments and suggestions that we heard from y'all and council. And I'd like to go through this and explain our thinking, show that we've made significant movement on this, and also explain why we're before you this morning or this evening with, with two separate plans, uh, what, the, what the reasoning behind that is. First of all, I'd like to kind of step back a little bit and look about where this is in, in Colleyville. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about, well, let's just make the lots bigger. And to a large extent, we have. But why, I might ask? If you look at the site and where it is and all the zoning, within a mile of us, this whole quadrant of town, there is not a single subdivided piece of property that has zoning larger than R20. We could have come in here and made a land use case that we should be R20 and we would match the highest uh, zoning for a mile. And I think that's undeniably a, a very strong land use case. So the idea of just making lots larger, I don't think holds water, but we're trying to go the extra mile here, and we, in fact, are presenting lots that are much larger than R20 uh, to you all tonight. So I just want, want to make that case from a land use can, case point of view. There really isn't a case that they ought to be larger than R20. Uh, a little bit closer in, here are the, the two properties, and you can see immediately next to us, there are R20 lots to the south of us, and to the west of us, which provides the only access to the 12-acre site, um, is a PUDR with 10 and 15,000 square foot lots. This uh, Ross Downs was developed with the idea, as Ben said earlier, that it would Wilkes Drive would eventually go through in here, and uh, it, it follows that it would be of a lot size and density similar to the PUDR that it comes out of, um, but we're not asking for 10,000 square foot lots here. We're asking to step this up to a much larger level. Um, one thing we discovered early on in this process was, as you might expect, that the neighbors along Wilkes Drive and Atlanta and the other streets leading up to here uh, were concerned about traffic through their neighborhood. That's actually, we think, a valid concern. And so we, at great expense, have put that 1.94 acre property under contract. 
um, way overpaying it, but we felt it was something that we could do in order to get access from Pool Road and to solve that problem. But there are limits as to how far we can go and still purchase that property and actually make this a reasonable financial deal. And that's why we're presenting two projects today. We still want to make it work coming off of Pool Road. And we've, we've, we've made significant changes to that plan, but we basically we're at the bottom of that. So we'd like to consider that. And if for some reason that didn't work, then we thought, well, we'll ask for R30 on the remainder. It will be by far the largest zoning in the area. Uh, on that alternative. Um, this, this shows that if we only have the 12 acre parcel, how we would get to the parcel uh, down Atlanta and Wilkes Drive. Um, I'd like to also remind you that uh, these proposals meet every facet of the Colville Master Plan, destination Colville. And some of the uh, excerpts that I think is important, uh, sure we want to protect the character, character and integrity of the existing neighborhoods. And it specifies that we do that with development that is compatible and complementary to the adjacent neighborhoods. I think we not only have done that, we have raised the bar here. All of our lots are larger than our adjacent lots and the uh, amenities and value of this property will be higher. Um, the lot sizes and building setbacks within the new subdivision should be determined based on the existing lot sizes and building setbacks of the existing neighborhoods. We are going to exceed the lot sizes and building setbacks of the adjacent neighborhoods. That's unquestionable. And, it, you know, it goes on and on basically saying this, the same thing. Um, This was the plan that you folks last saw and the, the city council saw. It had 19 lots, and you may recall early on in one of the workshops, um, one of the comments we got from you all at that time, we had lots less than 20,000 square feet, was that you'd feel more comfortable if we moved them up to 20,000 square feet. We did. Um, this was the plan where they were all above 20,000 square feet. It was the PUDR zoning. The density was 1.37 lots per acre, and we had the open space over 20%. This met all the requirements of the PUDR ordinance. Um, some of the comments we got from council on this were, um, and not unlike some of the comments we got from you all, were they were concerned about the development <coughs> possibilities because of the slopes out here. Um, this is, you know, this is not the Rocky Mountains. This is a sloped area and it's uh, unusual in Colleville, but this is eminently developable on that. There's nothing wrong with the soils, uh, contrary to what you might hear tonight, that, that all of this will be done directly. However, the road that comes in off of Pool Road and goes around there between, in this instance, lots three through ten, three through nine, and ten through fourteen. Uh, in this proposal, was accessing both of those lots on both the lower end and the higher end of the site. Uh, certainly, it is easier to only access one side of a road, what we call a single loaded road on that. So we felt that that was one change that we could make that would have a significant change in how much grading we had to do and how difficult it would be to access this, these lots. So that was one thing that we, we took to heart. It obviously can't cost us a tremendous number of lots, but, but we have worked that into the plan. And um, uh, this is the plan that we have before you today uh, for the both properties. This is the, what we're calling the 14-acre plan. Um, 
You can see this road comes in here off of Pool Road and comes around. There is a strip of open space right in here, in addition to the open space down in here, which would be a landscaped area. If you imagine coming in there along the slope and on the left side, there'll be a landscaped area, um, maybe with some retaining walls, but um, going up there. And so the entry will be real nice. The houses will just be on the lower end of the side. So the, the road can be put down a little bit to provide better access there. So that's a, a significant change that we did. Now, the cul-de-sac that comes in on the west, southwestern part there, that is actually a fairly flat area of the site, except in the backs of lots, you know, 12 and 13 there. But where the cul-de-sac is itself is actually very flat. Um, and so we felt that that was an area that those lots could access both sides of that road. Um, this is a total of 14 lots, which is more than a 25% reduction in the number of lots that you and the council last saw. That's a significant reduction. Um, these lots all meet the, one of the other requests we got from council was that they meet the width requirements of, of R20, every lot uh, 100 feet at the front building line. Uh, all these lots meet that requirement. Half the lots are over 30,000 square feet. Um, the other half are uh, in the upper 20s. Um, smallest lot is, is roughly 26,000 square feet. So these are re would represent by far the largest lots in, in the area in a, in a subdivision. The density is one lot per acre. That is extremely low density, especially for this part of town. Um, the open space is 20%. This also meets all the requirements of the PUDR ordinance uh, on here. Um, now, we've taken this to as few lots as we can do and still make this work and purchase that front property. We would have to get something approved, something like this or very similar to this in order to make that work. That's just, that's just the facts of life here. So uh, this is the project we would rather do. This is the project we feel solves more problems than the rest. This solves the access problem. We would still have the emergency only access at the request of the neighbors in the back. Uh, all of this, uh, would be accessed off of Pool Road. Uh, these would be fabulous homes built to the highest architectural standards. Um, and this is the project that we'd prefer to do. Um, however, if for some reason we can't get something like this approved, we have no choice but to not purchase that two acre site in the front and do a property, uh, a project on the property that we own. And the only point of access on this is from the rear. Um, we've decided not to ask for R20 on this. We've went, gone all the way to R30. Each one of these lots meets all the requirements of R30. Uh, the average lot sizes are um, much larger than that because of the breadth of the lots. Uh, some of them are as much as uh, almost double our 30s. There's some 56,000 square foot lots in here. Uh, both of these lots, uh, both of these plans address single loaded roads. You can see that where the road goes around the corner there by lots 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, uh, that road only accesses those lots on the bottom side of it. There is, um, and Ben suggested this is a possibility, but we've already written it in, a no access easement along the rear of lots 10 and 11 so that those lots would be restricted from getting access from, from the back there. So these five lots would, would be accessed off of this cul-de-sac and uh, these six lots would be accessed from the road coming around here. And again, we'd have that same thing where 
uh, the, the road would be lower to access the, the lower lots on that. Um, what, what that means to us is that we can do much less grading in the development of this. Um, let's go back to the 14-acre plan. This is the urban forestry plan of the 14-acre uh, plan. And is, if, you, if you remember the other one, there's significantly less red on this plan than there was in the other one. Why? Because we don't have to grade the lots uphill as much to meet those lots. Uh, the, the tree ordinance requires 50% tree preservation during the development. This plan increases that to 72%. So we're more than meeting the city's tree ordinance um, with, with this plan on development. And uh, we would also meet it on the, the home development. Uh, yes, we know there's trees on this property, but um, and it's almost solid trees in some areas. But that does not mean you cannot develop a piece of property. Most of the neighborhoods in Colville had trees on them before they were there, including all of our neighbors. And that's just a, a, a you know, what happens on that. Obviously, when the individual home builders come in, there may be specific trees that they work around. Trees are great value to a finished home. And, um, you know, That'll be part of the analysis of the homes that come in is, is how they're addressing uh, the trees. And you don't have to have a flat pad. You can develop multi-level homes as you go down the hill and other things here that, that uh, do your elevation change in the house rather than building a big pad with retaining walls around the outside. There's a lot of creative things that you can do to make it work on development like this. But this is the urban forestry plan for the 14-acre uh, plan. And then this is the urban forestry plan for the 12-acre plan. It's actually slightly better here. This plan uh, increases the tree preservation to, to 73%. Uh, from a drainage point of view, we, we went over this in, in great detail, and I can I can get into this in further detail, but I'll go through it rather quickly here. Uh, this is where the existing drainage is. You can see the majority of the site goes directly down to Big Bear Creek. There's a little bit there in the southwest corner that uh, presently heads uh, to our neighbors to the west of us. Uh, the plan would be, for the 14-acre plan, would be to capture that water that would be coming on the west side of this cul-de-sac in an underground system that's a ways off the property line so we can save some trees along there and take it all the way down to uh, the open space here at, that would drain directly down into Big Bear Creek. Uh, the rest of the project is fairly straightforward. These, these lots would all sheet flow directly into uh, uh, Bear Creek down there and then uh, these lots, these two lots in this area here would, would flow to the street, which would then be taken uh, to an underground pipe here that would go down and put directly into to Bear Creek down here. Um, for the 12-acre plan, it's, it's similar, a little bit different, um, and, uh, but generally all of these areas would drain directly down to Bear Creek. This part of this area in the middle here would drain to the street, which then would go down to Bear Creek through this facility right here. Uh, and then this area would drain down and go underground from here into there. Same thing in the southwest corner. This All this drainage here would be captured and go down to there. So what that means is, to our neighbors specifically, they have drainage coming onto them currently. We're going to improve that situation by picking up some of that drainage and putting it underground and taking it away. Now, we've heard stories about the drainage issues they have. Most of those have nothing to do with this property, but to the extent some of this property does head toward them, this development will make it better. Um, and uh, that's, the, that's the plan, and we're, we're trying to be good neighbors here and, and do that. Uh, you know, there was significant discussion about uh, 
you know, whether we need detention or not, last time I think we made a very compelling case that because there's a 30 square mile uh, drainage upstream area of us in Big Pear Creek, it's actually better and more productive for us to get our drainage down first before the 100 year storm gets to us. It's, it's when the peak flows are that's important, and that's what we're addressing. Uh, we've begun some sketches uh, and, and thoughts on what the entry would look like off of Pool Road. This is, is, is I think, uh, where we're heading with the, the idea of the gates and the uh, signage and, uh, you know, very, very nice, high quality. What's not shown here is a significant amount of landscaping that we're going to put along Pool Road, and we'll... We'll be adding that later, but I wanted to, to give you an early view of uh, what the entry would look like and, and you know some of the homes beyond there as you go along Pool Road. Uh, our intention is for this to be very, very nice. So that said, um, we would, here's the, here's the two plans. Um, we know you have to treat these individually. We would like for you to treat these individually and send them on to city council with your thoughts. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any any detailed questions you have. Thank you, Mr. Young. Um, commissioners have questions for the applicant. What is uh, the thought process in putting the uh, the twelve acre? the 12 lot plan with an entrance off on pool versus coming in off of Wilkes Drive? Uh, in other words, the, the the one with more lots, you come off a of pool road. Right. The one with the larger lots, you're coming off a of Wilkes Drive. Because what, if we only have the 12 acres, we don't have ac access to pool road. We have to, the only way we can get access to pool road is to purchase that 1.94 acre or 80,000 square foot lot. Right. The, the zero edition that's, that's there now. And if we buy that then obviously that's more property and it it gets us access to that but we have additional lots um, for that purchase um, you know from a financial standpoint because of the value of that you know the 14 lots 11 lots to pay because that, of the purchase is part. that part of the in the not that i need to do your accounting but it, the break-even numbers just don't make it work to, yes to the 12 acre to be access off a of pool is, is, am I understanding that correctly? We can't get access off a of pool if we only own the 12 acres. We don't have access to pool road. That's 14 acre with the access. Yeah, I see that. That's why I'm, just doesn't make sense to me, but I'll study it a little bit more. Well, it's, that, it's really I'm, pretty simple. Uh, okay. They, they need to have more lots to sell to have the funds to, to buy that So it's a break even analysis. That's what I'm getting yes. at. Is, okay. Right. That's what I'm. That's what I'm question. getting at. Yeah, it's the break-even numbers don't work to do it that way. Right. These are basically fifty, you know, six half a dozen. The other, as far as that goes, because of the purchase of that two acres and the. No, I understand. That's and that's. But that's we what, but we get something for that. We get access off of Pool Road, which I think is better for. So you want two more lots to get access off of Pool? Road. You need two lots off of more lots. Three make, actually. Three but, lots yes. to make it work. Yes. To make exactly. the numbers work. Yes. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank okay. you. I'm glad we could clear that up. <laughs> Anything else for the applicant right now? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Young. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, at this time, I'm going to um, open the public hearing. I do have a number of cards. So... Um, the public hearing is open, and um, those who do not wish to speak but um, want to record their opposition are Elizabeth Hearn, Sherry Moore, Michelle Aguiera, Sharon DeLu DeLuca, Michael Van Zant, and Robert Zebian, and Robert Bodiger. Botcher, Botger. And um, the first uh, person that I will call on to speak will be Mike Farrell. 
When you come to the mic, please state your name and address for the record and be mindful of the clock. Um, well, I need to... Uh, we, um, we do ask that you speak... Um, into the microphone. Uh, concisely into the microphone and um, acknowledge when your time is up by closing your statement. I'm just going to go to this one right now. Yep. Okay, into Zoom. How do I? All right, sorry. That advances, right? Yeah. And then to zoom in. Aha. Uh -huh. Whatever we typically do. If I wanted to zoom in on that. Whatever we normally would for public meetings. Uh, so I always hit control and, and then okay. use the, but then you'll have to zoom back out. I suppose you can use some buttons up here too. All right. How do we escape back? Just hit right. this button right here. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm just getting That's used okay. to the computer here. Um, so I looked at the plans and there's some issues with the grading in here and how they're going to fit onto the lots. Um, so with that, uh, and also wanted to mention that the drainage doesn't all flow over this way into Bear Creek. There's some of it off of this hill and this knoll that flow down into lot six and seven. And that's, that's been addressed many times, but just never gets done. So in looking at the elevation changes here, you have across the road a 15-foot elevation change. That means you're going to need a 7-foot retaining wall here, a 7-foot retaining wall here. You have about a 10-foot drop to the front of the house. Over the course of the house, you have another 15-foot drop. That means you're going to have about a 45 about a 40 foot retaining wall on the back side of the house. Okay, so it's just gonna be, and, and that's the case for these here because you just have such a high gradient. And that becomes evident when you look at here where they're taking and doing this grading here. That house can't sit in that grading area. So I don't see how that house is gonna fit there with that grading. Guys kinda of need to look at that. I gave you drawings to look at. Um, sorry, I got away from the mic. Um, so this is also with houses on it, and you can look. Ah. All right, we'll try this way. So here I push that house back and you see that you have to put the pool, and if you had a kitchen, an outdoor kitchen, you'd have to put it off to the side. If you look at this one over here, the house is over that area, and it becomes very difficult. And you look at the number of retaining walls that are necessary to be able to accomplish that. This is a driveway going into the side entry garage, and you're gonna have retaining walls here, you're gonna have retaining walls on a lot of these lots just to be able to accomplish everything and, and get the houses in there. I just don't see how he's going to do it. Um, then I also went and I looked at the number of trees that the developer is going to take out from the hardscape. So this one, you're going to lose 43, this 35, this 23. And so I've counted those. And you can look at your plan that I don't have to try to zoom back out again. And um, we'll see. And as you go down, yeah, true, on the level lots over here, you don't have retaining walls, but over here, you have retaining walls all over the place, just to be able to, to accommodate everything. That takes out more trees. And when you get into some of these things, I cannot see how they're not gonna have to have piers anchored down in there to be able to keep their foundations from sliding off and going down. I mean, just the number of retaining walls. It just, I just can't see it working. Um, so I'm opposed to it because one, I don't see how it's going to work engineering wise on, on these, on these lots. They're just not big enough to, I mean, even though he's increased the size of them, they're still not big enough to support this. The number of retaining walls are, you know, just amazing. 
and um, th then just the number of tree, you know, trees that are lost. We look at when he counted out, he had uh, 246. When I count all the trees from the houses, I'm up to five, 569. So 2.3 times. So any questions? Thank you, Mr. Farrell. Okay. How do I get back out of this one? X out. And then I'm gonna show you one last one. Just got a minute. And this is what happened. They cut down some trees back in February and this is what happened. So I don't see how that live tree was cut down or why. I think we were targeted. I don't think we we're very being very honest about this. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Robert Egan. Can you reset me? I got, yeah, can I have more than 27 seconds? <laughs> I'm waiting for oh. you to go. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Robert Egan. I live at 2410 12 Oaks Lane in Ross Downs. Um, just on the record, I oppose, I'm in opposition to both uh, 2D and 2E. Um, I will give um, Willow Tree Development, Mr. Wood and, and Curtis, credit. They did listen to y'all and to the city council and to the residents previously that um, we weren't happy with what they came to the city council with. Unfortunately, uh, they came back, what they came back with, we weren't, we're still not happy with. Uh, we wanted a lot fewer. The city council said maybe four or six houses. They came back with now 11 and 14. They did offer to listen to us and, and want to have a conversation. Uh, they were very open about it. And uh, there were four of us from Ross Downs that met with them over at Market Street. And they presented the two plans. And I find it interesting. Um, I, I do not wish to disparage them, but I find it rather interesting that they are selective in terms of the information that they provide. Tonight, um, Curtis said that the city does not wish to purchase that property. That is correct. But however, there is a trust, and I'm sure there's someone in the audience that can tell you what that trust is, that they buy urban area and, and they will purchase it and then they will deed it over to the city, okay? The problem is that the trust, and whatever that trust is, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it, they are not willing to buy it at the inflated price that the, the developer wants. They want it at, the, at a market value. Now, he failed to tell you that, okay? So you have to understand. He also failed to tell, tell he told us previously that they owned that 2.1 acre property. Now we find out, oh no, it's just under contract. So when he met us, he gave us the two proposals. And it was kind of like, well, there's the one coming in off of Pool Road, and then there's one coming off of Wilkes. And it was kind of like, we know you don't want the one off of Wilkes. So it was kind of like the innuendo. Why don't you join us and take the one off of Pool Road? So anyway, I don't want to go farther. Um, my understanding is that the urban forester wants to cut a number of the trees in there. And, and I, I agree with that. And my understanding is it's kind of like the theory, you thin the herd for the benefit of the herd. And that's good. Because when they thin out these trees, what's going to happen? It's going to make that forest healthier. And what is it going to do? It's going to make it healthier for generations to come. Well, that's good. Okay? And it's going to last for many more generations. Well, if we look at the number of trees that will now be left, we've, I, I don't know why we went from 900 down to like the 800. 
But when you take out the number of trees that will be, will be destroyed through just the infrastructure, okay, yeah, it's going to be 50% or left. But again, as, as Mike said, you take out the trees that are going to be taken out for the foundations and um, the retaining walls, the amount of canopy that's left is going to be about 20% or so. And the only people that are going to enjoy that are the people that are going to be in there. And it's a gated community. So it's unfortunate. Now, I do want to point out, all right, I'm the, uh, the, um, I've lived in Ross Downs, and I'm the most senior resident, having lived there for over 32 years. And Mr. Woods, who is part of this development, um, also helped, uh, was part of Ross Downs. And uh, when Ross Downs was developed, they put a lot premium on any lot in Ross Downs that had mature trees. And back then, it was at least a $5,000 lot premium. And now, fortunately, mine, my, my, mine didn't have any mature trees. So I watched, I watched a lot of people pay that premium. And then as time went by, so Mr. Woods got his 30 pieces of, of silver for those properties. And I watched as those trees slowly died because either the, the found, they were too close to the foundation or they died from compaction from the equipment or what Howard Garrett likes to call peopleitis, okay? And um, Curtis also showed us pictures from a, 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 um, a, pro, a, a development in Westlake where they have a lot of terraces. Okay, eventually a lot of those trees died. So I just wonder how many of those trees are really going to survive this. Because again, what you're seeing is a two-dimensional development. When you look at it in 3D, I honestly don't know how this is gonna work. So again, I ask you to please um, deny these requests. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Egan. Bo Bacher. Can you get, stool. you have the mic at your level? I do, I need a step stool. Okay, well we can hear you, so okay. speak into the mic. My name is Bo Botcher. My husband Robert and I live at 6800 Atlanta Drive, and we are opposed to both um, plans. As Bob said, sorry, Robert Egan said, um, personally, I don't trust what has been said by Curtis Young or what's been presented by the developer. As, Rob, as Bob said, um, we, the residents, were told that <clears throat> that almost two acres was purchased. And later we learned, oh, it's under contract. Um, he tells us that um, the, the properties and these developments are going to be comparable to the neighborhoods. How can that be? <laughs> um, we... There may be a few homes that are 3,500 square feet, but none of them are multi-million dollar homes. Um, I do feel that if, if a plan was approved, I certainly don't like the one that's coming off of Wilkes, because that would come all the way down to Melanie, or sorry, 12 Oaks, Melanie, and then Atlanta onto Wilkes. Um, I think another plan needs to be developed, fewer homes, save more trees, but if a new plan is developed, I want some very specified, specific um, details in the ordinances on what is required of the developer. I think the, the language in there right now is too general. Um, another part of the mistrust is um, them going in and cutting down trees, as you saw from Mike's property, after, after it was denied by PNZ and city council. I'm sorry, that's just sneaky and underhanded. I think that's all. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you, Ms. Butcher. Uh, Sam DeLuca. My name is Sam DeLuca. I live at 2404 Wilkes Drive. I'm a retired architect. I practiced architecture for some 35 years. First time I saw the plan, uh, 
and it hasn't really changed that much from months ago, except the number of houses and perhaps the entrance off Pool Road. First thing I saw is uh, the houses are aligned side by side, uh, and uh, so I imagine the site was fairly flat, although I live a few blocks away. It appears that when the houses are laid out that way, uh, it is relatively flat. But uh, as an architect, from an architect's point of view, we always try to work with the land the way it is. We don't flatten it out. This, this, this type of layout necessitates uh, flattening the whole, pretty much the whole site where the houses are going to be built. And that's not good. It means you're destroying trees, changing drainage, where water used to drain directly into the ground. It's now paved with concrete or asphalt, whatever. And uh, so there's lots of runoff where there wasn't. So, and the runoff runs in all different directions. But mostly, I'm concerned about uh, when they start changing grades. This is, uh, exp it's called expansive soil. When you move dirt more than just that much, you know, just inches, and you, you, you're moving many feet in certain instances, the, the, the soil reacts. There's underground pressures underneath the soil that if you remove dirt, cut, cut the dirt, you know, remove, then the upward, this tremendous upward pressures. If, if you add dirt, again, you're changing the grades. This causes cracks. We're all familiar with Colleyville and throughout the whole Metroplex, there are, are th this type of soil conditions. Soil conditions are terrible out here. Most parts of the country do not have that. And I, as an architect, I've dealt with that. I've seen it. And uh, anyway, I don't believe, I, you know, the developer mentions that this site, when Colleyville was built, uh, it was always intended that they would build here in the future. And I think they didn't build in this area because of the very steep grades in this particular area and not in other areas in, in Ross Downs. Anyway, uh, many other issues were, were mentioned, uh, but I, I just wanted to address, I don't think enough was said about uh, the soil conditions here. Uh, I, I, th I think they're going to have uh, many foundation problems in this area. Um, and th there could be lawsuits against uh, the developer, against perhaps even the city of Colleyville, because they allowed this project to go ahead. And uh, anyway, I think this, this should never be consid even considered, uh, or it should be very quickly re rejected when uh, when presented to you, and I, I urge you reject the, mat, the, the, the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeLuca. Lenona Nichols. LaDonna. Len <laughs> Hello, Council. Uh, my name is Lenona Nichols. I live at 1017 West Murphy Road way on the other side of town. So this is not something that's in my backyard, but it is something I really feel passionate about for Colleyville. So I, I, I struggle with myself on what really is the question. Is it about lots, drainage, trees, pool road, the 1.94 acres? What really is the question? And I think as a Colleyville resident, it's really not um, the size of the lot, the square footage of the house, Wait, the square footage of the house, that's going to affect, affect the trees. I know that the lot I bought here uh, 11 years ago, I bought it for the trees. 
um, position my house, saved as many trees as I could. But as the gentleman earlier said, everything looks really nice and tidy up there with all these little square boxes on each one of these lots. But you know when you buy a lot, you've got to accommodate, you know, you get your size of your house, and then you have to position it on the lot, just as was shown earlier. Then you've got the pool, you've got the driveway, you've got all those things. Um, just in this last discussion we had about all these retaining walls and how that looks and how that affects the neighborhood and kind of the aesthetics of the neighborhood. If you drive over to Terra, oh my gosh, I'm six foot three. Some of those walls are way taller than I can even touch the top. So let's say 15 feet. Uh, there was a lot of seepage under the walls. They've been there a long time, which created problems in the neighbor's driveways, on the street. You can't really look down the street here and enjoy the neighborhood that you have because most of the time you're looking at a wall and it's a very tall wall. And as we know, as the gentleman said, the land shifts, walls crumble, a lot of expense. And um, the place, that, the area that I live, um, there's Toll Brothers development there. I bought the lot, it's not in Toll Brothers. It's a nice quiet street, Murphy Road. And Herbert, we put in 200 homes in Toll Brothers, and what do I have? A freeway of those people coming out of Toll Brothers down Murphy Road to either go down Herbert, a residential street, which would be Wilkes in this situation, or occasionally they'll go down to Precinct Line, but it's harder to get out there because of the traffic. So I have a truck every morning, 530. The guy has the mag pipes. Every morning he comes out of the residence, makes the corner, I'm on the corner, makes the corner, and then blows it out 45 miles an hour down Herbert. Every single morning, 5.30, he goes to work. That's what you're get on, on, gonna get on Wilkes if you have that as your exit. And I believe when he, the gentleman started talking, he said he had bought the 194 acres. They went ahead and made that big investment to make this work. And then as he said several times after that, no, I haven't bought it yet, it's a contingency. And as many people have said, you know, what is the real story? What is the real ask? Um, I understand that the trees there are part of some uh, unique forest that's only in Colleyville that comes from the way up in the United States. Those are prime trees. They're, they're unique to Colleyville. They make Colleyville unique. Maybe it's not bought by the city to become a park, but there can be other things, and I know that they've talked about the grant money. So I'm not opposed to the gentleman building houses, but I, I think I've said in my prior conversations, there's a ton of teardown lots in Colleyville. You could buy probably a whole street on some of these older streets and make that whole street be uh, a lot, you know, a gated community or whatnot and build homes in there. And you wouldn't have all the infrastructure cost. But here, if you live on, I think it's like 11 and 12 on this uh, model and then eight and nine on the other model, if you notice, and I had a house like this that was on a cul-de-sac. The front of the lot is, I don't know, small, and then it, it mirrors out. Well, the house has to be set so far back off the lot, and then that's in the drainage that's coming down through there. I've also lived at the end of the hill, and everybody's water came through my lot uh, when I lived in Arlington. So we've all kind of talked about this. Again, what's the question? Is it that we don't want them to build the houses. I don't really think that's, we, we want houses built. We want people to come to Colleyville. This is a great community. But I think it's more about the retaining walls, the drainage, the coming in off of Wilkes, the little things that if you add them up, they become the big thing. And they become the big thing to the neighbors in the community. I want the investment to go forward for this gentleman. But again, we've never seen the builder at any of the meetings. So just think about those questions. All right, thank you very much. Okay, Sam Hearn. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. My name is Sam Hearn. I live at 2409 Wilkes Drive. I grew up here in Colleyville for the first 22 or so years of my life and uh, got back here with my wife as quickly as I could after that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about 
you know, without rehashing too much of what's been said tonight, kind of the reason that we're here. So, um, we've, we've heard all of these arguments before. Um, there's been a lot of saying that they're addressing the concerns, but when you really look at, at what you all came with, and I would say, you know, you have your role and then what the city council really asked questions about, it wasn't so much that they were wondering how to move dirt there to make these houses work. It was that they genuinely seemed not to believe that you could move dirt in a way that would make a development work here. Um, so there's been a little bit of minimization about the grading change on this lot, that we don't live in the Rocky Mountains. We certainly don't, but this property is unique in the entire city of Colleyville. You can get it in Grapevine, you can get it in South Lake, but you know, you can't get it in Colleyville. So, so what did we try to do after the city council um, denied the original proposal? We worked with the Trust for Public Land um, who, who would try to find a way, you know, whether it's them, whether it's grants, whether it's the city to finance that type of purchase. Um, and they're right, we weren't able to meet um, an $8 million ask um, on, on the 12 acres for, for a lot that really in any kind of appraisal situation would, would not be worth anywhere near $8 million. Um, and so, yeah, we ran into a dead end and it's a shame, but it's really a shame because we end up here in the same place with the same issues um, over and over again. So I think there's a way forward. I think there's a way for the city to purchase the, the land through some combination of financing. Um, but it's not our job and it's not your job and it's not the city council's job to clean up a mess of somebody swooping in, underpaying for a property um, and buying it outright without a contingency, without a zoning change, um, and then holding a second plan over our head like a guillotine, trying to force us to get on board so that he can go through with his contingent purchase when he was smart enough to do what he probably does in the other circumstances when he develops, when he didn't have the, the deal of a lifetime um, right there before his eyes. So I think at the end of the day, this is the wrong plan for the land. I know some of y'all have, have been out there and walked it. You know, you, you can't even walk parts of it for the thickness of the trees. You, you can't get to every part of it. It's beautiful. There's so much we could do with it. Um, yeah. It would be great if someone would buy land right down from my house, but I spent the majority of my time in Colleyville, you know, in an old neighborhood, living with my parents on the other side of Colleyville. We didn't have parks. Um, I, I I got to see the the cows that were outside in the cattle farm on my uh, fifth fifth year old Christmas. Um, by the time I turned six, they were gone, and Remington Park was there. And then the next development came, and the next development came, and the next development came. And at a certain point, you can cherry pick pieces of the developed Colleyville plan and say that this is gonna fit in with whatever feel we want for the city. I think we have a pretty good fitting in going on right now. We have development after development that's come and come and come. And so why don't we look at the other parts of the developed Colleyville plan, the, the destination Colleyville plan, and we can see that there is a request for more parkland. People want the green space. People want the city to go out and get that. People want us to keep our rural feel. Um, and so I think there's a unique opportunity here. There's a chance for us to once again, um, with two new plans as y'all have before and as council did after y'all, to go ahead and push the break, um, deny this proposal, um, and, and let us find a way through um, with realistic appraised values in mind, um, not, not working in outlandish um, overpay, overpaying amounts so someone can try to make their money back and, and we can get there and we can keep this as, as a, a unique piece of property in Colleyville instead of another, you know, mini California, white houses, black roofs, squared off, just filling in land and, and doing it till there's no more left. So thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Hearn. <laughs> Kathy Hadley. <laughs> A 
I'm solidifying up there. Kathy Hadley, 204 Timberline Drive North, to represent myself. Okay, speak a little louder, please. Kathy Hadley, 204 Timberline Drive North, I represent myself. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Um, I don't live over there, but I'm very passionate about Colleyville and something that, that he had said that really concerns me. Um, he was all concerned that if he doesn't get what he wants, he's going to turn, turn it on. All the existing neighborhoods around there are R20. Are, are, are well, guess what? The first developed neighborhood of Colleyville that I live in is R20, but we are all virtually acre lots. And the neighborhood I grew up in, second neighborhood of Colleyville, um, Brighton Oaks, it's R20, and those were um, several acre lots. And it was zoned R20. So, you know, I, we can just keep the larger lots. We don't have to worry about the water he talked about. The, the drainage will just take it down to Bear Creek. Bear Creek is flooding. With all the development we have, it's flooding. It's awful. My mother lives down toward, in, like I said, in Bright Oaks, down by Bear Creek. There's that flood zone area, and it is, her house is fine, but it is, Bear Creek is just overflowing its banks because of all the development. It doesn't have anywhere to go. The best thing to do is keep that, the, that area that the gentleman wants to do, develop. Let the water soak into the land instead of you know, making it run down to Bear Creek. This is, Colleyville is Tree City, USA. We need to preserve our trees, keeping the larger lots. For the wildlife in, in the community. Um, and also, if we're going to, if he wants to rezone it, do residential estate homes, not PUDs. Do something that is reflective of Colleyville, the fine neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hadley. And the last speaker card I have is for Dave Dudziak. Thank you, Commissioners. My name is Dave Dujak. I live at 2301 Wilkes Court in wonderful Colleyville. Um, I want to thank my neighbors. They make some excellent points. Um, there's a lot of things that they would like to see done with property, this particular property. Maybe it's my pragmatic view, maybe it's sitting on the board where you are today over 10 years ago, that I have a maybe slightly different perspective. And that perspective would be is people have a right to do what they want with their land. We all enjoy that, especially here in Texas. And while we would like to have a trust by this, I'm good with that. I love trees as much as anyone. That had to be a process that started a long time ago. Or they need to be working with the city now, not in front of the board here, but with the city itself to try to make that happen. That's not your role. What I have seen is a process, and I've experienced that, and you have too. There are ideas that come forth. The, the 19 uh, subdivision, excuse me, the 19 lot was defeated and well by a well-done group of organized neighbors of mine. They did a fine job. I love the video. It's one of my favorites I've seen sitting on the board. Um, so they did a good job there. We're down to 14 lots. What I would like to see someone on the board do, and I know you can't speak directly to my questions, is someone explain to them R30 zoning and the consequences of a disapproval. It is something that I think they have a good idea of because I have talked about it with them since the very first meeting we had 
that developers have that ultimate right. I want to see the pool road exit because in the long run, most of us in the neighborhood there are going to be happier with less cars on our road. They're going to be very happy with those, the entire gated community. The drainage will be better on some of the lots that are right adjacent to the, pro to the property. And for that reason, I support 2E. I don't want to see the cars coming down Wilkes Road. I don't want to see the UPS and the, and the prime drivers back and forth. I just want to see our neighbors enjoying the comfort of their homes. Uh, we had a new resident move in on Atlanta just the other day, and he was out front. His little girl was just coming down their driveway and didn't get into the street because dad was there, but that's the kind of fun kids can have on Atlanta, on Wilkes right now. I'd like that to continue. So I want you to consider approving the Pool Road Exit 2E. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dujak. Um, it, I don't have any other cards. Um, see, another gentleman would like to come forward. You may. Um, state your name and address for the record, and before you leave, if you will, fill out one of these cards in back and turn it in uh, to Mr. Briner over here. Oh, thank you. Okay. Good, uh, good evening. My name is Mark Goodwin. I live at 585 North Paytonville in South Lake, Texas. I am the owner of the property. And so I would like to clarify a bunch that's been said tonight and give you the facts. One, I came to PNZ owning just the 12 acres. I had no intention of trying to buy additional two acres. So everyone understands I didn't, you know, hide anything from anyone. Ben introduced me. Ben introduced me to the owners. After asking, we might be better off, and after the residents told me not to come through Wilkes, I followed every single thing. We worked through every single thing that this PNZ and the council, I've been doing this for 38 years in Colleyville, Southlake, and Westlake. What I do for a living is put people in homes. So when you talk about all of the stuff about these homes, I deal with it every single day. The drainage, the foundations, all of it. I've seen it all. This property is not unique to anywhere else we do. Yes, we do stuff in Westlake. Yes, we do stuff in Colleyville. We do stuff in Dallas. I know we don't want to be like a bunch of those towns in Colleyville. I understand that. But this is not an albatross or some very unique property. I didn't swoop in, to clarify this, I didn't swoop in and take advantage of an old lady on this property. Let's make that very clear. I've known the lady. She's asked me. I was part of Ross Downs financing people's homes in Ross Downs years and years ago. I didn't develop any of it. I didn't make $5,000 on any trees. That's not me. So let's get the facts straight. I bought a piece of property because the lady that lived there was going to develop this and her husband died. It's always been going to be developed. She said, I can't do this, I'm too old. Would you like to buy the property, Mark, at a fair market value? That's what I did. No swooping, no taking advantage. And yes, I listened to every resident and everyone. That's what I do every day. So when anything came up, we tried to address it. You want bigger lots, that's fine. We'll do bigger lots. The problem is, is twofold here. I would prefer to come through Wilkes. You would prefer not to come through Wilkes. How do we solve that? I get introduced and I go out and I talk to the people. And let me explain to you, that piece of property is being purchased, if it's purchased, for about six times what it's worth. I didn't want to buy the property. I don't want to buy the property. I'm doing it because this PNZ and that council wants me to not come through Wilkes, and I'm okay with that. There is no money being made on that property. It's just passing the cost through to the builders and who are going to do that loan. That's the facts. 
So I'm up here not hiding behind Curtis and the developer. I just, I'm here, I've been at every meeting. Y'all have all seen me. I've been at every meeting with the people in the area. If I would have got offered anything, no one's come to me, not one offer. Not one, Mark, can we talk to you about a value? Let's see what it's worth. What they presume, okay, is something I don't know. The value of the property, I know what it's worth being developed. Again, I've done this 38 years. It's gonna be an extremely nice subdivision at some point, <laughs> okay? And so all I ask is for you to look at the real facts, okay? It's always been developed. If you want it off Wilkes, we'll do it off Wilkes. If you want it not to come through Wilkes, then tell me that and we'll buy the other piece of property. But I didn't go out there trying to hide anything from anyone. I'm well known in this community for 38 years in Northeast Tarrant County. So anyone can call me. My phone numbers are all over this town. Anybody can sit down with a meeting and I've asked the council or anyone that is concerned about what I do or would like to talk me in something. We've agreed for boundary lines around the property. And what's really funny about these trees, does anyone know that these, a lot of these trees are not native trees to this property? Does anyone even know that? This lady planted 1,200 pine trees. 12 hundred pine trees on the property, and she grew them. She knew, Mark, we're going to cut some of them down. Thank you very much. Any Thank questions? you. Um, at this time, we won't take, we won't. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's someone else wishing to speak. Good evening. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Hearn. I actually turned in a card saying that I wouldn't speak and feel so compelled to do so. So I live at 2409 Wilkes Drive in Colleyville. Um, I did want to clarify that I actually um, mean no ill wish, but I witnessed the conversation that happened after the last city council meeting in which my husband approached um, the builder and asked exactly the price point that is needed in order to um, make the deal with the land trust. Um, organization. So I can verify that that conversation did happen. When we relayed that information to the land trust, they were not willing in order to, because of the price inflation on that. So I just want a second um, to, to verify that the story is true. Um, and then I want to try to transition away from some of the technicalities. I am a pharmacist. I can't speak about land grading or flooding or retention walls or any of that. Um, but I do want you to know that we moved here to Colleyville because of the family feel, because of the commitment to trees, because of the commitment to the country feel that's in the development plan um, for the city. We specifically chose Ross Downs because it's a well-established neighborhood. Um, we love Wilkes Drive because it's an end um, road. I am pregnant. We have a child on the way, and I can't help but really feel um, like we are missing out on the things that we really hoped for with our home and with our property. Uh, we are being forced to say, no, we don't want the Wilkes Drive exit. So, okay, we can do the pool drive exit. No, I, they're both terrible plans and we're being put in a situation where one plan seems better than the other. And at the end of the, at the, end of the day, the pool drive exit is going to be between Cross Timbers and Glen Hope Elementary. So you're still going to have children who are going to be impacted by the traffic off of Pool Road. Um, as opposed to the Wilkes Drive, you have children at Kimsey Park that are being um, impacted by the traffic off of Wilkes Drive. So neither plan is appropriate for the family feel, for the country feel of, that Colleyville is trying to maintain. So I just want to point that out, um, that we are tired we are normal people we have jobs and you all see us come out in grove in droves every single time this comes um, before you before the city council we mentioned 18 people in opposition in the area around this plan but we've also been collecting hundreds of letters of opposition over the course of this entire process with at least 100 
specific to the two plans that are here tonight. So if you don't already have 100 opposition letters from other um, city members across Colleyville outside of this, this area on the map, you will have them soon because they're in our inbox waiting to be sent to you. So just keep in mind too that we are people, we are your residents, we are begging for you to listen to the things that are really important to us, the things that drew us to this community. Um, and we really need somebody to advocate um, that, that our voices are being heard. So please just consider that. Consider what we love about Colleyville, and I'm sure it's what you love as well. Um, and we will continue to show up because it is important to us. Um, but it would mean a lot if we didn't have to keep showing up. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, we are regular people. We're doing our best to show you that, that this matters a lot. Um, and we appreciate your time over and over again. We do appreciate every time you show up and that you give us just the time to listen. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hearn. Is there anyone else? Seeing no one else, I'm going to close the public hearing. The public hearing is closed. And at this time, um, the applicant, I'm sure, would like to respond to some of the citizen concerns. So I'd ask you to come back up, Mr. Young. Thank you, Chair. You know, hear a lot of things people are entitled to their opinion but they're not entitled to their own facts facts are facts and i'd like to clear up a couple things here we have never hid anything from anyone and we've never lied to anyone in this entire process uh, we may have mark may have mentioned some numbers in a after meeting conversation out in the dark but we have never been approached by anyone that wants to ask that has made an offer on this property that remains true, okay? We have also never told anyone that we own the 1.94 acre property. They all know if they listen carefully, and I realize people that aren't in this business don't realize that generally the way you do things is put a piece of property under contract until you get entitlements. It's actually unusual to purchase the property uh, like Mark did on the, the major piece here. But we've all, we went out special, negotiated for several weeks, and are way overpaying, as I said, for that property. But it's under contract, because it makes no sense to buy that unless it makes financial sense for the project. And this idea that I can live on my 10,000 square foot lot, but that was developed, that had trees on it, that had slopes on it, and somehow that's okay, but my neighbor down the street can't develop their property, to me, is anti-American. I don't know where we're getting this kind of thing, and it's not a competition to see how many names we can get go up and down the streets to oppose something here. I'm hopeful, and I reach out to you as members of the Planning and Zoning Commission to review this from a planning and zoning point of view, not from a political point of view. That's, that's what I ask you to do. Um, as I said, we, we uh, you know, there, uh, Mr. Farrell had comments about retaining walls and trees. There is more than one way to develop a sloped piece of property. As I said, you can do split-level homes that work their way down there. Um, there, you know, this is done all the time. This, you know, the idea that we have, you know, we have the best civil engineers. We're going to have the best structural engineers. We're going to have the best architects working on this. Believe me, this can be done. It's not unusual. Uh, we can do this. Um, you do not have to, this, you know, with all due respect to Mr. DeLuca, fellow architect, uh, this works with the land better than any plan you could think of. We're bringing the road in and going basically parallel to the contours. That's how you develop with the land, okay? We don't come in and, and go straight up a hill and that kind of stuff. This has been very carefully planned. I've been doing this for 40 years. Believe me, I know how these things work, and this has been very carefully planned to go with the land and to take advantage of the features of the property. Bigger lots isn't going to change anything. 
What's changed between the previous plan and this plan is not really the size of the lots. What's changed is that we're single loading the road. We could make these lots two acre lots and we'd still have to get from point A to point B with this road to, in order to get the second point of access. It's not going to change that grading plan one iota. It doesn't matter what, how big the, the lots are. We are, in good faith, making these lots 50% larger than the largest lots around us, okay? We're trying to reach out here and do the right thing as best as we can, and we're, we're doing everything we can, but at a certain point, it, it doesn't work. And, you know, I hear a lot from the leaders of this city about their conservative nature and all that kind of stuff. What about property rights? Do we not have property rights in America here? You know, that somehow we think that, well, you're the last thing to happen, so, so you can't develop your property. Well, I reject that. That is, that is not right. Uh, all the drainage, all the runoff, all the... Yeah, we may put some piers in some of these houses. That's how you build quality houses in the year 2023. Yes, we're going to have structural engineers that are going to design this so that they don't move around. We don't need to worry about taking six inches of soil off the ground and what's going to happen. This is all going to be designed. This is not Las Colinas. Believe me, the soil here actually is very good compared to many other places in the Metroplex. I've done work in Las Colinas, and you can almost watch, you know, when it rains, the ground go up and down over there. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, and that goes all the way up, you know, to Plano. Uh, we actually have better soil here. It's, it's kind of a swath of, of soil, so we're, we're lucky in that thing. Uh, Someone mentioned traffic. Yes, we we not like to add traffic to Wilkes and Atlanta and Melanie and Twelve Oaks and all the other streets on that. But you know, we have to have something that's reasonable in order to purchase this overpriced piece of property. It's not a sword that we're putting up against. It's just the facts of life on that. Um, traffic. My God, Pool Road is a major thoroughfare. 14 homes coming out on Pool Road is not going to move the needle one iota from a traffic standpoint on that. It's, it's not even going to be a rounding error on that. Uh, there is a median break and a left turn lane already installed where we would hook up to that. Uh, it's, it's entirely safe. The, the major sidewalks are on the west side of Pool Road, it, if it were me, I would put a sidewalk at 12 Oaks across uh, with a flashing light to get the kids onto the west uh, east side of Pool Road, which is where the wide sidewalk is that takes them to Cross Timbers. Uh, uh, Glen Hope is the other direction. No one goes by would go by this entrance going to to Glen Hope uh, from from Ross Downs. Um, and, uh, you know, Ms. Hadley mentioned that there are, are 20 places in Colleyville that have larger lots. Yes, yeah, some of those old things do. None of the lots on that graphic I showed you are, are much larger than our 20 lots. This is not a low-density part of town. Well, really it is because our 20 lots are low-density in almost any place. But, but we, we will be the low-density leader in this part of town should we develop this property. Um, the idea that we, we can't fit on these lots or soil conditions or the runoff doesn't work or we can't build here because of grades, that's just, those are just opinions by amateur civil engineers. They do not know the facts. The facts are we can do this, it's not that big a deal, and that we are incentivized as much as anyone to save as many of these trees as possible. And we will. Um, that said, we would like you are a recommending body. Um, I, I, I believe the task here is to look at each of these plans individually, not to, as someone said earlier, say, 
and, and if you have opinions that you'd like one or the other, that's that's fine. But to look at them individually and recommend to the city council that on the 14-acre plan, we like it, we don't like it, we 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 would like these changes made or whatever. And on the 12-acre plan, the, the same thing, um, and and let, let the city council deal with the politics of of the things. But uh, my thought is that it's it's your job to recommend from a planning standpoint what it is and, and let them deal with it, the rest of it. But that said, I'd be happy to take any comments you have. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. And Okay. Thank you, Mr. Young. You. I'm sure we have comments and questions. Um, there were a couple of things uh, that um, the citizens brought up, and, and so I just want... Um, if I can, to mention those things and maybe get some clarification. Now, if correct me if I'm wrong, but these little squares on the site plan, that is not the footprint of the house. That is simply representative of the house. That Yes, that is just something so that someone, a home buyer, for example, can look at that and say, okay, that square is 65 feet by 70 or whatever it is. We put these on all of our plans to what we call put people in scale because they know how big a, big a, a square that is. Okay, so that's 3,800 square feet or whatever it is. Then that gives me an idea of that. But okay. no, it is not intended to that be the footprint, the footprint of the plan. So when someone comes in and purchases um, one of the lots and decides... Um, on the house, how it's going to fit on the property, the intention, even when they are dealing with that, is to save the trees as well. Is Absol that not correct? Absolutely. And there are also, you'll see on these these lots, there are also side, front, and rear setbacks. Those are really what, what I call, they define the building envelope between those setbacks. Mm -hmm. Those are the limits as to where they can put that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they can, they can go around... A tree go around or, trees or, or, and or what have you. Well, whatever, I just as long as they to, stay within the setbacks. I just wanted to mention that because yes. I think sometimes people look at this and they say, "Oh, look at all these houses, and if there's trees there, all those trees are going to come down." But this is this is uh, not a footprint of the house. Right, That's, okay. you're correct. Okay, and then um, several people. Um, this kind of concerned me. Mentioned they are cutting down trees and they are going, you know, I, who are they okay, cutting let me, down Let me trees. talk about the, the tree cutting episode a little yes, bit. Yes, please. Um, we, uh, uh, Mark received from some of our neighbors some calls since he's on the property of large limbs that have fallen down into their things. And Mark, you can add to this. At numerous times in the last year, I get calls from the city, I get calls from the neighbors. Many, again, like I said, have done their mortgages and they call, hey, Mark, I've got a tree that's fallen. One of the pine trees, matter of fact, it's typically the pine trees. They get big, the wind blows, they mm -hmm. snap off, we know how it goes, right? I grew up in the piney woods. So I get a call from the neighbors. She's going on vacation. She says, Mark, one of your trees fell on that. I didn't, usually I get a call from the city, that's happened twice, and I send out guys to go cut down trees. Okay. Okay. They went over and cut down the trees for this lady. She said, a couple of the trees in my backyard, I literally had her trees trimmed for her in her backyard, just because I'm trying to be the good neighbor. So this happened about two or three times. So I said, guys, there's some dead trees over there. I went to Ben. I said, we're going to be come, cutting some trees down that are dead trees. I sent a crew over there. There's no hiding. Here's what happened. We cut down several big, giant dead trees that I'm afraid were going to fall on neighbors and I was going to be liable. They cut down. No hiding. They cut down one of his trees that are on my property. Well, that's correct. They cut down a big pine tree. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sir. They accidentally cut down that tree. One tree that Thank was there. You. 
Thank the you. landscapers. We cleaned several bit of the property, and by the way, I've had the arbors out there hand picking the trees that need to be cut down. We're not devastating or doing anything. We haven't cut any other trees. Well, we I cleaned up the property, and we are cutting down the dead trees that he's asked us to cut down. Thank you, sir. Okay, that that was just on my mind because it, it concerns me when people are making allegations and then someone doesn't have an opportunity to respond. So, and, and people need to understand um, that I, while there is something here that needs to be looked at and considered seriously, there are these people who are our citizens who have all kinds of concerns about the development of the property. At the same time, we, we prefer not to have ill will. And the best thing we can do, I think, is address those things. So, um, okay, so that's that. Um, I'm going to let the other commissioners uh, speak to you and uh, ask their questions and express their concerns. And uh, Mark, I'm sorry not to call you Mark. I didn't get your last name. Mark Goodwin. Goodwin. Okay, Mr. Yes, Goodwin, you may be seated. Okay. Curtis, have you guys done any soil tests down there for just to see what, what it's going to require in terms of p uh, types of piers, depths of piers, or anything like that? Not detailed soil tests, no, but we're familiar with building in, in similar areas. It, the, the subdivision that comes to mind is the one, I think it's Kirkwood Boulevard and uh, Davis Boulevard up there in Westlake. Oak Knoll, I think. Yeah, name. Oak Knoll. Yeah. Yes, I'm very familiar That's, with that. That has a lot of multi-level houses, similar type terrain, am I not mistaken? Steeper, probably. Yeah. And there's and all those houses are multi-level piers and... Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I did the planning on that well, project. Well, I figured you did. That's I'm, why I was I'm asking very, the question. I'm very familiar with it. Okay, and so... And we've got another one coming on even steeper property in, in Westlake, and they're embracing them. And and if, if my memory serves me correctly, because I drive by there every now and then, a lot of the, those trees have been retained, and people aren't always putting in swimming pools. Yes, absolutely. Or, or small pools, not a you know sixty by thirty type pool. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have a, Do you have any plan to put uh, instead of R twenty R thirty lots, go for R forty lots, and that's. Uh, well. One less number of lots and it, it, one it doesn't work financially and two it doesn't solve any problem. It, we as I said before we still have to get from point A to point B with the street. It doesn't change the grading of the streets any longer. Yeah, but less number of lots I'm talking about. I know, but what good, what good does that do? Really, what other than the oblique thing is let's let's have fewer, you know. I've been doing this for 40 years. I always get asked, can we have fewer lots or bigger lots? It, you know, that's not what makes quality development necessarily. What quality, that's one of many factors that goes into quality development. We have so many things here involved in that. So I don't mean to be argumentative. I'm just saying, to what end does that, what, what does that do for us? It would, in, like in effect, be an lines. anomaly in the area. Uh, um, you touched on it, and one of the neighbors um, that spoke touched on it. I believe he was the second to the last. Um, that it's almost, basically, it's inevitable that something can be built here, but based on a R20 regulation. Is that, uh, can you expand on that? Where here we have the advantage of emptying out onto pool instead of Wilkes. Well, you know, we, we think that, you know, I'm not an attorney and whatever, but the city has a certain obligation at some point to treat all their landowners fairly and evenly, okay? At a certain point, it becomes so ridiculous to take a look at this. And I hearken back to that first slide I showed of the zoning in the area. And, and for the city to say, well, you should do R40, for example, when there's no, nothing anywhere close to that, anywhere near, at a certain point, then we believe, and, and probably others, that 
the city is not upholding its responsibilities to be fair and impartial to its various citizens and landowners. And so at a, at a certain point, there's an obligation to give it some zoning. Now, uh, I believe Dave suggested that, you know, we could probably make a pretty good case for straight R30 and win in court if it came to that. We're not, we're not threatening that. We're not suggesting that. We're just saying at a certain point, zoning has to be given somewhat consistent with in the area. We're, we're going beyond that. So I think, I think that's what, what was probably meant there. Mr. Young, can you please show me the other plan you have, the, the first one? Jackie, you could go back to his if you wanted as well. Yeah. Okay, I'll go back. The 2D. The two next to each other? Well, yeah. You'll have to reopen yours. I think I had minimized it. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. There it Slide is. And 15, scroll up Jackie. one. There you go. There you go. Okay, here are the two plans side by side. So I'm not asking something uh, and... Uh, you can see some of the lots from lot number one, two, three, four, five. Uh, these all lots qualify for R40 zoning. And some of them here, like 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, even 6, is just few thousand square feet away from R40 lots. So I'm not asking something that you're not presenting here. It's just a little bit of well, it's the more adjustment than just, you needed. Know, as you know, the requirements for R40, it's more than just the square footage of the lot. It's things like lot width and whatever. And that's where we would have trouble meeting any of the R40 requirements on these, even though some of them are much larger than 40,000 mm -hmm. square feet. There's all kinds of requirements, as you all know. Uh, you know, setbacks, lot width, minimum lot depths, all those kinds of things. And, um, you know, I think what you're pointing out here is that we're trying to meet you more than halfway here by making these lots as large as possible. Um, they meet all the requirements, including lot widths or whatever, of R30. Um, uh, not all of them would, would meet R40, even those that are over R40, but they're large lots. They're much larger than anything around here. Um, and if we don't have to buy that, piece there in front then and we came from the back then this would work for us uh, these are going to be fabulous homes on fabulous lots um, uh, but again you know we think that uh, you know the city likes open space the city likes better access so it's it is our preference as I've said to do the 14 lot 14 acre plan and you know that's those two numbers rhyme, 14 lots, 14 acres. You know, that's about <laughs> one lot per acre. You know, isn't that low density? Isn't that almost the, the definition of low density? Um. One other question. Um, sure. Are, is this just a development where individual lots will be sold and the homeowners will choose their own builder, or will there be... Um, uh, multiple builders contracting within this area uh, because one of the, um, I, I guess it was Miss Nichols, someone said they had not even, uh, I don't remember, had not even seen the builder. And I don't know, sometimes the developments include multiple there's builders. A, there's one, one okay. of our builders and developers. Right okay, there. so. So I'll address that if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. So as we speak today, there are in the Northeast Tarrant County area that I have 417 custom homes I'm doing, okay? I know all of the custom guys. I'm very selective, okay? <laughs> very selective. And so I've selected three builders, okay, to go into that subdivision at the highest quality, the very highest quality. Some live, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one of them definitely lives in Colleyville and his whole life and lived here. Uh, Travis is right there. That's Willetry. Okay. 
and an, another gentleman is building in Colleyville and has for a long time. So I've personally selected the guys that I know I won't have trouble with. I finance the homes many of the time, and so I want to make sure that we have the highest quality, highest standards, and everything in this subdivision. And Mr. Goodman, what would be the price range for those houses if it's 2D or 2E? Okay, so we talked about multi-million dollar houses in this subdivision, okay? In this particular house range and based off current pricing that I see on a daily basis, these houses will approach $3 million. $3 million for plan A, right? How about plan It doesn't B? matter what, it doesn't matter. The only thing that changes is the lot size, the building costs are the same. If you do the bigger lots, the one in, in the first section, that's going to give the opportunity for a builder to mm -hmm. build out more and a bigger house. So the cost per foot is the same. It just depends on what size lot they have. But the bigger the lot, the more the lot costs, the more they're going to charge. But to answer your first question, based off what I've been going through for the last year, they have to be in that price range. So uh, do you think you can sell $3 million lot with with the houses on Wilkes Drive, was it like five, six hundred thousand dollar houses? If uh, you know the subdivision right down the road that was approved by y'all, and that subdivision is in right now, we sold all of those lots, and all of those have uh, being houses being built. Those are half acre lots. Those houses are two million dollars to two and a half million dollars. So I would, I would think that, first of all, I've been on the other side of this yes, table. So I know how the citizens feel. I know how passionate they are about their own neighborhood and about the needs and about the trees. And I listen very carefully to all of the concerns and sometimes people get emotional and they imagine how it's going to be. And it's not always that way. Sometimes things don't turn out well, too. We're, nobody's stupid, I mean, you know. Um, Been there. But, <laughs> but um, as a body here, I think we not only need to consider um, what's being brought forward, but who is bringing it forward, what their experience is, what their intentions are. And um, if I'm living in um, one of the beautiful homes that are already existing in Ross Downs, and I see that I'm going to be surrounded by um, additional homes of uh, greater value, to me that says that my property will increase in value, It'll be a good that it would yes, not be detrimental to those people. Sure. So I, I love our Colleyville citizens, and, you know, I wish everyone could have what they want. You know, I wish we could give you what you want. I wish we could give them what they want. But we have to, we have to be practical. So that's just where I am right now. Can I, I point out one other thing about you asked the quality and who are the builders and stuff going in there? If you look at the entrance that was proposed to you today, okay, the entrance, if you can, the, we only have, I think, one rendering right now. Mm -hmm. That is a fabulous, fabulous entrance into one of the subdivisions, could be the, one of the nicest subdivisions in Colleyville. All the way down is stone walls and, we're not, and trees we propose all the way down to buffer everything. We're trying to do the absolute best of the best ever built. That's, that's why we take the time we do, because yeah. that's what we want. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you all. Um, questions? I think uh, we should go for executive session for attorneys. Can we?
Okay, then at this time, uh, you can be seated. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll let, uh, we will recess into executive session um, and return shortly for um, the purpose of uh, legal counsel.
go back and I'm not making them. It's not working. I'm making them emotional. I know, my computer died. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's denying it. Yes, I understand. Yeah. 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 Why don't you take that? Do you do? He is cool. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. This, this uh, City of Colleyville Planning and Zoning Commission for March 20th okay. is now in session. Um, and so is there any further discussion at this point or do we have um, call the uh, call which agenda item we're going to be voting on? Uh, the first item we're going to vote on is 2D which is on your screen on the left. And I need a motion, please. I move that case ZC23-009 be rejected. I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, so um, the motion is made by Commissioner Rain and seconded by Commissioner Gross to deny KCC 23-009. Take a vote. An I yes means you are denying the case. Commissioner Gross? Aye. Commissioner Alfonso? Aye. Commissioner Syed? Aye. Commissioner Rain? Aye. Commissioner Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Bevel votes aye. Commissioner Richardson? I abstain. Commissioner Richardson abstains. So the case is denied by a vote of 6-0 with one abstention. And I'd just like to clarify for the record, um, Commissioner Richardson has abstained because he will be sitting on council as of next month. And so to avoid any potential personal conflict, he is abstaining from this vote. Okay, and then at this time, we'll be voting um, on um, item 2E, which is ZC23010. Um, I need a motion, please. Motion to approve. Case CZ 23-010. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Alfonso, a second by Commissioner Rain to approve Case CC 23-010. Take a vote. Commissioner Gross? Aye. Commissioner Alfonso? Aye. Commissioner Syed? Nay. Nee. Commissioner Rain? Aye. Commissioner Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Bevel votes aye. Commissioner Richardson? Abstain. So we have uh, the motion is passed by a vote of five, one with one abstention. Okay, and beyond that, there are uh, no other uh, posted items. So at this time, we will have our citizens' comments. So I have no cards, but if someone would like to come forward and speak, I'll open the public hearing. This is for anything that was not already considered on tonight's agenda. Public hearing is open. No one coming forward. The citizens' comments are closed, and the meeting is adjourned.